You're watching NASA TV. Good morning from Mission Control in Houston and the International Space Station Flight Control Room. You are looking live at vehicles on the Russian segment at the space-facing side of the Russian side of the International Space Station as we begin our coverage today of Russian spacewalk number 52, uh, the spacewalk that will begin the process of uh, about a half a dozen or so spacewalks over the next several months to outfit and activate the European robotic arm that is located on the Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory module and to begin its work to move a radiator and an airlock around and to be in position to support uh, the movement of people and payloads on the Russian segment of the International Space Station in the future. Right now in the Poisk module on the space-facing side of the International Space Station's Russian segment, two Russian cosmonauts, Oleg Artemyev and Denis Matveyev, are suited up in their Russian Orlan spacesuits, ready to begin uh, the process of depressurizing the Poisk airlock following their pre-breathe of pure oxygen to cleanse the nitrogen out of their bloodstreams, preventing any condition known as decompression sickness or the bends from occurring when they step out into the vacuum of space the Russian spacewalk today is scheduled to begin at about 9.25 a.m. Central Time, 10.25 a.m. Eastern Time. A Russian spacewalk is measured by the time that the airlock hatch is opened until the time the airlock hatch is closed. Today's spacewalk that is expected to last up to seven hours in duration is uh, primarily designed to install and connect a device called the European Robotic Arm Spacewalk Control Panel near the base point to which the European Robotic Arm is mounted on the Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory Module. This uh, control panel that opens up basically like a suitcase uh, will be the point at which commands can be sent to not only activate the arm, but to movement off of its uh, to move it off of its dual grapple points uh, on uh, the surface of the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module so that it can extend to its full reach of about 37 feet in length and uh, for its future use uh, to maneuver around uh, the Russian segment of the station. This European robotic arm will be used in uh, augmenting the capabilities of the Canadarm2 robotic arm and the Japanese robotic arm that are on the US segment of of the International Space Station, but which cannot reach far enough to support activities on the Russian side. So the European robotic arm, which uh, has been years in the making and testing, launched uh, last July uh, attached to the Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory module, and today uh, will begin to be activated uh, by Artemyev and Matveyev as they uh, begin their work outside the Russian segment of the station. They will also uh, be involved in the removal of protective covers from payload interfaces and uh, base points to which uh, the two sides or the two grapple fixtures of the uh, European robotic arm are affixed at the moment. They'll be installing a trio of handrails and removing a thermal cover from the elbow of the European robotic arm as well as uh, installing a portable workstation adapter on a payload interface that will be used in the future for spacewalkers uh, to uh, mount their feet and uh, to uh, mount payloads and other equipment during the conduct of future spacewalks. Today's spacewalk, uh, once it gets underway, will be the 249th in support of Space Station Assembly Maintenance and Upgrades, the fourth spacewalk uh, of 2022, the first for Expedition 67. This will be the fourth spacewalk in Oleg Artemyev's career, three previous spacewalks, garnering him 20 hours and 20 minutes of spacewalking time. He will be clad in the uh, Orlan spacesuit bearing the red stripes as EV-1, or extravehicular crew member number one. He will also have a helmet camera that uh, will provide us up close and personal views of his work outside during the course of today's excursion. That uh, will be helmet camera number 16. This will be the first spacewalk for Denis Matveyev, who arrived on the International Space Station several weeks ago, along with uh, Artemyev and Sergei Korsakov, who uh, helped uh, the two cosmonauts suit up a couple of hours ago. Matveyev will be wearing the Orlan uh, suit uh, bearing the blue stripes. His helmet camera number will be 20.
As mentioned, uh, today's spacewalk and the next several uh, outside of the Russian segment of the station by uh, spacewalking uh, crew members uh, are all about the European robotic arm. Spacewalk engineer Mitch Harger uh, has uh, narrated uh, an animation of today's work uh, that will amplify on uh, the tasks that we ran down for you just a few moments ago. Let's take a look at that right now. Russian Spacewalk 52 will be conducted by Oleg Artemyev, EV-1 on the Red Stripes, and Denise Matt. Overview of uh, today's spacewalk activities uh, upcoming for Oleg Artemyev and Denise Matveyev as they uh, are in the Poisk airlock ready to uh, depressurize uh, the airlock down to vacuum, conduct uh, systems and communications checks with the Russian flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center in Korolyov before they get the go-ahead to open the hatch. That will mark the official start of today's spacewalk. While this activity uh, is ongoing, a busy week is kicking off uh, aboard the International Outpost. The Axiom-1 quartet that has been uh, aboard the station for more than a week, they are preparing uh, for their scheduled undocking from the International Space Station on Tuesday morning, weather permitting, and uh, later in the week, the arrival of the Crew 4 astronauts uh, 
who are scheduled to launch on Saturday on a Crew Dragon vehicle from the Kennedy Space Center. The Crew 4 astronauts uh, that you see in this picture from left to right, Bob Hines, Samantha Cristoforetti of the European Space Agency, Jessica Watkins, and Crew 4 Commander Chell Lindgren are flying down to the Kennedy Space Center today. Their arrival at the Kennedy Space Center to begin uh, their final pre-launch preparations will be broadcast on NASA TV's media channel only starting at, a, at about 11.30 a.m. Central Time, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time, while we continue our EVA coverage on the public channel. The uh, departure of the Axiom 1 crew is dependent on the weather at the splashdown opportunities that are available. Their current uh, undocking time is 9.35 a.m. Central Time on Tuesday morning. However, the weather may be iffy. There is a weather briefing scheduled for later today by SpaceX and uh, the various uh, other organizations involved in uh, uh, overseeing uh, the departure of Axiom uh, uh, and their crew members and uh, the crew uh, Dragon Endeavor that they are flying on, that uh, weather briefing will determine whether or not they actually have an opportunity uh, to depart tomorrow or move on to a later undocking opportunity. We shall see. Meanwhile, again, as mentioned, uh, the spacewalk today being conducted by Russian flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center in Karyov on the outskirts of Moscow. You see a live view from a balcony camera. Those uh, flight controllers uh, will be uh, overseeing all of the activities of Artemyev and Matveyev outside of the uh, Russian segment as they work uh, in the vicinity of the European robotic arm on the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module. Again, uh, today's activities primarily involving the installation and connection of a control panel box near the base point to which the European robotic arm is anchored. Here in Mission Control in Houston, uh, the Orbit 2 team of flight controllers is on console at this hour. They took a handover about uh, an hour or so ago. They're led by Flight Director Greg Whitney at the bottom of your screen. To his right, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency astronaut Koichi Wakata, a member of the Crew 5 crew that is scheduled to launch this September on the same vehicle, Endeavour, that the Axiom 1 crew is departing and coming home uh, on later this week. The European robotic arm that is uh, the focus of attention of today's activities uh, and for the next several spacewalks to be conducted uh, out of the Russian segment of the International Space Station is uh, 37 feet long. It uh, is a very sophisticated and complex uh, piece of hardware with two end effectors, very much like Canadarm2, the uh, primary robotic instrument on the U.S. segment of the International Space Station. It is also equipped with four infrared cameras, uh, the elbow joint and the central con control computer located uh, right next to each other, and uh, of course wrist and roll joints, uh, very, very much like uh, the Canadian-built uh, robotic arm that has serviced uh, the International Space Station now for more than two decades. Uh, because uh, the uh, Canadarm2 and the Japanese uh, robotic arm cannot reach all the way to the Russian segment of the International Space Station, this robotic arm will will uh, greatly augment uh, the capability to move payloads and spacewalkers around uh, in the conduct of uh, experimental and other maintenance activities outside of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. Mode operational message. Okay, we got the standby no operational as you advise. And please press continue and move to step four, copy. The next in the series of spacewalks uh, for uh, cosmonauts Artemyev and Medvedev is scheduled for Thursday, April 28th. Uh, during that spacewalk, assuming everything goes as planned today, 
They will be removing and jettisoning a series of thermal blankets uh, covering uh, the European uh, robotic arm. They will be releasing a, a series of launch locks on the grappling mechanisms or the two ends of the uh, uh, European robotic arm where the grapple fixtures are located. Uh, they uh, will be uh, also verifying uh, the operation of the roll joints. Uh, they'll be uh, deblocking, as they call it, uh, basically uh, enabling the uh, torque and force sensor rigidization mechanism on the robotic arm. And uh, it will actually take its first movement away from its base point, the arm will uh, to move uh, a few inches away just to verify that it uh, actually is receiving the commands through the uh, control panel that will be installed by Artemiev and Matveyev during today's spacewalk. That uh, second in the series of these European robotic arm outfitting spacewalks is scheduled on Thursday, April 28th, and again, we'll be providing live coverage of that here on NASA television, again beginning at 9 a.m. Central Time, 10 a.m. Eastern Time on NASA television. Set it to one uh, for your um, heat settings. Well, um, it was pretty chilly here, so I set it to one. Okay, it's set to one now. So, and Dennis, for you, the heat setting uh, and the... Settings for <clears throat> your um, hot and cold uh, for the suit are um, comfortable. Yeah, I'm just adjusting them as um, I go, as needed. What do you see on the counter? Five minutes, 27 seconds for EV1, and uh, the same for EV2. All right, then uh, please prepare uh, cue card number six. All right, that's going to be for depressed to 12 millimeters. Okay. So our pneumatic valve is off. Uh, primary regulator. Primary regulator, what's uh, its status for you, Dennis? Checking. I have the flag on the right. I have it on the right. O2 primary tank. Um, I have the flag on the right as well, and for me too. Primary uh, pump, okay, for us it's going to be the backup pump. Yes, it's kind of getting chilly. 
All right, and we are standing by for, for the deep press. Do you have um, O2 open? Set, yes. Now stand by till the counter gets all two zeros, and then you'll proceed with a step 9.2 MRM2 deep press. Copy. Station mask on space to ground one for Sergei. Okay, for the uh, pre breathe, we still have two minutes. Okay, we copy. Two minutes left on the pre breathe. Station Moscow on space to ground one for Sergei. Go ahead. Sergei, uh, we got CSS. And you can start with procedure 2.5. So, please check what are your settings for hot and cold. Um, and, uh, Sergey, you can proceed with the error activation activities. It's going to be 2.5. That's good. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, we're continuing uh, to listen uh, to the conversations on orbit uh, between Oleg Artemyev and Denis Matveyev in the airlock of the Poisk module on the space-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station as they talk uh, to Russian flight controllers uh, at the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow. The two crew members are suited up in their Russian Orlan spacesuits, ready to begin a spacewalk uh, a short time from now, in which they'll venture outside of Poisk, move down to the Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory module, and begin work uh, on the outfitting and activation of the European robotic arm that is affixed uh, to the outside of uh, the MLM, as it is called, the Multipurpose Laboratory module. Please verify. The uh, Poisk airlock is in the process of okay. being depressurized. Once that occurs, uh, the two uh, cosmonauts uh, will 
conduct checks of their communication systems. They'll conduct a final leak check on their suits and other systems checks uh, with the Russian flight controllers before opening the hatch to Poisk that will mark the official start of the 249th spacewalk in support of space station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. I need to be a little bit closer. Oleg, if you're ready, you can start with step 9.2. Are you ready? MRM2 depress. O2 flow selected to injector position. It's in the injector position. I have it in the injector position as well. Copy. LED is illuminated. And now we're opening KSD SO valve, and we are dropping to um, pressure of 350 down to 300 millimeters. Copy. KSD SO valve is open. So please monitor the um, suit pressure and then MV pressure. Okay, uh, for EV102 pressure and for... The module five one zero. Suit pressure is zero three and zero two, and uh, four eighty is the pressure in the um, module in MRM two. Please monitor oh, if the pressure is in within the range and. If it is in the uh, range, then we will open as the SO. All right, pressure is 420 and for 0 0.38 for EV1 and 0 0.39 for EV2 suit pressures. 400, uh, 400 is for the uh, module depress. Uh, 380 and 0 0.39 is for the suit. All right. And for space to ground one, all the settings are are correct. Okay, please switch 2.2.6 for the error operations. And then please close the window. Copy. 320 is the pressure, 0 0.38 is the EV1 um, pressure, 0 0.39 uh, is EV2 pressure, and um, Oleg, you can uh, open the um, KSD2, KSD so uh, the pressure is 380. And 0 0.38 is for the suit pressure. Copy. 0 0.38 is for the suit pressure. Okay, that's good. So please stand by for the uh, 20 millimeter points. Uh, when the pressure in MRM2 reaches 20 millimeters point, you will have to close guys the two. 0 0.38 is the pressure in the suit. Copy. 0 0.38. So please, uh, what, what do you see on the counter for the injector? Three minutes. Copy. All right. MRM2 pressure is 200. 0 0.38 is for EV. Two cosmonauts are reporting on uh, pressure readings. Inside uh, the Poisk module airlock, uh, which is being depressurized down to vacuum in a multi step fashion, Artemiev uh, is wearing the Orlon suit uh, with the red stripes as EV1 or extravehicular crew member number one, about to begin the fourth spacewalk of his career. Matveyev, a first time space flyer, embarking on the first spacewalk of several that he will be conducting with Artemiev. Uh, in the uh, conduct of the outfitting and activation of the European robotic arm. Matveyev will wear the Orlon suit uh, with the blue stripes as EV2 or extravehicular crew member number two.
Uh, to the left. Shift to the left. Okay. So, what uh, does the timer say? 127 seconds. 0 038, uh, the pressure is in the spacesuit. Copy. Right, so when the timer uh, starts the direct countdown, so please switch off both switches. So the module pressure is 100 and 038 is in the spacesuit, so the direct countdown has started. Copy. And this, the uh, LEDs are not illuminated? No. So the module pressure is 90 and spacesuit 037. Okay, so you will have to shift uh, the switches to the uh, spacesuit unintelligible, but before that, uh, you will receive the message. Copy. Okay, so on the PSS panel, the O2 open EVA message. Did you acknowledge the message? The view of the uh, Poisk module in which uh, module Mar Artemiev and uh, Matveyev are suited up in the process of depressurizing the airlock that will lead uh, to the opening of the hatch that will mark the official start of today's spacewalk. What belt? The first uh, for Expedition 67, the fourth out of the International Space Station this yeah, year. Come again. Injector is deactivated? Yes, I confirm. It is deactivated. 60 is the module pressure. Copy. 037 is in millimeters in the spacesuit. Copy. Copy. Sounds good. Five zero is in the module. Copy. And uh, Alex, stand by for the message. This uh, uh, module pressure is forty five four five. So stand by for the message that it is in the O2 open EVA position. And I have not received this message yet. I have the message, BSS O2 open ED, 35 millimeters, 37 millimeters, copy. Okay, so once there is 20 millimeters, uh, then you will uh, switch the uh, BSS O2 open EVA. Copy. So when we reach 20 millimeters, uh, then we will uh, put the switch in that position. Copy. The module pressure is 27 millimeters. Zero 036 millimeters is in the space suit. Zero 036 for EV2. EV2 operator copy. 25. 25. The mark was passed. Copy.
20 millimeters, so put it in the O2 V position. And at 12 millimeters, we will close the KSD depressed valve. Copy. Yes, so first that uh, valve KSD and then um, the uh, another valve KSD SO also should be closed at 12 millimeters. Copy. So far we have 18 millimeters. Unintelligible. Okay, this is Sergey. I am uh, performing the loading of the um, database. What is the pressure on MV? It is 13 millimeters now. Copy. Now we have reached 12. I am closing as the two valves. It is closed, and now KSDS or interface is also closed. 0.37 millimeters is the space suit pressure. Copy. Now you will have to perform a MRM2 final leak check. Copy. So the next cue card will be seven. Number seven is Orlan transition to autonomous power. So you put it on six, and when the cooling down starts, you perform the cue card number seven. So you will the disconnect the umbilical and uh, you monitor that the pressure in the uh, the tanks 
is nominal, nominal, and then you will stand by for five minutes. It is 10, okay, 10, copy. How much time has passed already? Four minutes. Sounds good. Copy. Denise, when in one minute you will again look at the MV, uh, please do it carefully, okay? Copy. This is Mission Control Houston, the depressurization of the uh, Poisk airlock. You're looking at the Poisk module on the space-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. That depressurization is complete. Uh, we're standing by for a variety of different systems checks for Oleg Artemyev and Denis Matveyev uh, before they uh, are declared ready to roll with the uh, opening of the hatch to the airlock that will mark the official start of today's spacewalk. This will be the fourth spacewalk for Oleg Artemyev, the first for Denise Matveyev, who launched it together along with their intravehicular crew member, Sergei Korsakov, on a uh, Russian Soyuz vehicle, the MS-21. That launch occurring uh, some three weeks ago. This thermal conditioning valve to sixth position, yes. And please stand by for my go to continue. Okay, standing by. And it, the uh, cooler dryer is in position six. Now it's a go to perform Q card seven or land transition to autonomous power. Okay, so we're deactivating the pump, the fan. And activate uh, the backup pump and backup fan, copy, in work. And the transmitter, unintelligible. So the power switch should be in autonomous position. So now the EV one is on autonomous power and the time 1440, 1444 to be more exact. EV2 also transitioned at the same time. Copy. And Oleg Artemyev uh, confirming that both he and Medvedev have switched uh, their Orlan spacesuits to uh, battery power. 
for a U.S.-based spacewalk. That would mark the official start of a spacewalk, but uh, for the Russians, it is marked from hatch open to hatch close. The uh, mode is being deactivated right now. Yes, the LED is not illuminated now. And uh, so the electrical umbilical is this this uh, demated from Orlan. Yes, and please cover uh, Orlan electrical connector with MLI. So we will cover it and we will stow it now. EV1 demated the electrical umbilical. Copy. And what about electrical connector? It should be covered with a. And the two cosmonauts reporting good leak checks on their suits, so we are on the verge of uh, them being given the green light to open the hatch. Did you demate the. That will mark the official start of today's spacewalk. There are a number of spacewalks uh, that lie ahead uh, over the next several months uh, to activate and operate uh, the European robotic arm in its infantile state of operation uh, at the International Space Station. This will include uh, the next spacewalk in which a number of launch locks will be released and the arm itself will take uh, some baby steps away from its respective uh, grapple fixtures on both ends of the 37-foot-long arm. The arm will be used to transfer a radiator uh, that is mounted on the uh, multi-purpose laboratory module to its uh, fixture point, its final point of operation, uh, to unfurl and be used uh, for heat dissipation, and then also to move an airlock around from its stowed position on the uh, Naoka module to its uh, deployed uh, position. That is where uh, most of the Russian spacewalks will be mounted in the uh, years ahead. Naoka having replaced the piers docking compartment, when it was launched uh, last July, and then added to it the Prichal node module, to which a Soyuz is currently docked, that is a multi-port uh, docking node for a number of Russian vehicles that will be arriving at the International Space Station in the months and years ahead. Copy. And what about fluid umbilical? It should be placed in its... Uh, place location, correct? So please plug uh, the fluid umbilical uh, with uh, caps and copy of a storage cap and cover a line fluid umbilical controller with MLI flap in work. So fluid umbilical is covered with a storage cap for EV1 copy. Now please uh, cover a launch fluid umbilical connector with a MLI flap. Okay. EV1 has kept uh, the fluid umbilical. Copy, Dennis. Now, uh, please cover a launch fluid umbilical connector with flap. Yes, it is closed with MLI flap. Alec, what about your uh, connector? It is closed. Okay, so BSS MRM2 should be in position if EV closed, O2 closed. Copy for EV1 and for EV2. Two cosmonauts conducting leak checks as the International Space Station flies 261 statute miles over Canada to the southeast of Ontario. 
moving from southwest and northeast on this orbit of the Earth that is inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. So on the display, uh, on the upper line, so what is the uh, O2 pressure? 410 for EV2 and 408 for EV1. Copy. Sounds good. Now, this view of the uh, Poisk module, uh, alongside of it is the uh, Strela boom, Strela, the Russian word for arrow. This is a 50-foot-long telescoping boom that the cosmonauts and other spacewalkers uh, in the past have used to uh, basically uh, maneuver uh, to various work sites along the Russian segment of the International Space Station. MV pressure reading, please, before we part. MRM2 pressure is 10, 10 millimeters. Well, maybe 11, about 11 millimeters. Copy, Alex, thank you. In this orientation, in this view, uh, the cosmonauts, once they emerge from the Poisk airlock, they'll move uh, from the bottom of the Strela boom to the top of your screen, where they will uh, begin to set up their tools, their tethers, and other equipment that they'll be using uh, during the course of today's spacewalk. So, Denis, now you will have to uh, rotate a little bit. Oh, Alek, Denis, this is Sergei. I am greeting you. Hello, Sergei. We are happy to hear your voice. I hope everything is nominal with you. Uh, and uh, you're in good mood. Yes, that's the most important uh, thing to be ready for work. Okay, so we are standing by for your commands and goals. Now, please uh, check that all the hardware uh, is secured and the tools are secured as well. We are checking that everything is secured. By two point in two points, and the long hook is secured to the handrail, and the short one uh, also is secured. Copy. Okay, let me check as well. This is EV1. Okay, I will strengthen this out. Денис, Олег, у нас сейчас прогнозируется прерывание связи минут на пять-семь. Олег, we will have a five-minute LOS. Немного подождем. So, как мы пройдем эту зону и let us wait until the calm is. Reliable, and then we. I will give you go to proceed, and in the meantime, please prepare the hatch tool. Uh, you know to work with it and uh, check all the tethers and all the hardware. All right, sounds good. So please stand by. 
of after the LOS, we will give you a go. Copy. Now let's see. Check the hatch. So, Denis, while we have come, let's continue. So, so look at the four uh, emergency boats and check them. Uh, emergency valves. So two are open. And I actually checked them before the depress. So the all four are open, correct? Yes, that's correct. Copy. So the uh, handles on the covers should be in the position closed, and they should be directed uh, towards each other. They are covered with MLI, actually. They should be, uh, they are uh, the same plane and they are directed to each other. Yes, uh, I'm checking. So everything is nominal with the handles. Do you confirm? Yes, they are directed to each other toward each other, and uh, there are arrows that are pointing in that direction. Copy now. Let's continue. So we will become, uh, might uh, break any time, but let's continue in the meantime. So should we start opening? All right. Uh, so the adjustable tether. Yes. Uh, yes, I have the tether. It, it is behind you. I think maybe you just, you should disconnect it for me. All right, will do. Here you go. And uh, in, in such a manner, so the don't hurry up. Okay, now let us start the, op the opening of the EV hatch. So use the, the uh, hatch tool and uh, please make sure uh, that all the rollers are moving in the right direction along the guidelines. Okay, Denise, how are we doing? So this cover should uh, should have been. Yes, that's correct. Stand by, Denise. Stand by. Let me secure it here. With the uh, depressurization of the Poisk airlock and other systems checks out of the way, uh, Artemiev and uh, Matveyev about to open up the hatch to the Poisk module to mark the start of today's spacewalk. I'm not doing anything. Copy. So go ahead uh, and uh, uh, hand over the hook to me. There it goes. 
Олег Денис, как там ситуация по поводу люка удалось? Олег Денис, how is it going with the hatch? Have you been able to open it? Uh, it's uh, in the process uh, of being uh, opened. And uh, uh, we're coming up uh, on uh, a loss of uh, signal. Everyone. So that's why I'm uh, dropping out. So the rollers are out, uh, and I'm ready to uh, now start using the hatch tool, the pusher. Uh, okay, so um, make sure that uh, you pull uh, the handle uh, towards yourself to hard stop uh, and hold it there until the, uh, the pressure drops. Uh, all right, uh, it's in work. Mm -hmm. Is it going down? Yes, okay, that's great. Uh, you see, uh, the uh, uh, vacuum cleaner is uh, working. And uh, we're getting close to zero. Uh, go ahead and uh, start opening the hatch. Did the pressure drop? Yes. Opa, look at it. Uh, the hatch is open. Uh, if the hatch is open. Uh, uh, and um, and uh, uh, now remove the hooks uh, from uh, the um, uh, tethers uh, and uh, um, secure it on the ring. Uh, yes, it is already done. Go ahead and uh, I'll take the ring. Stand by. Okay, I'm holding the ring. And with that call, the uh, 249th Spacewalk in support of Station Assembly Maintenance and Upgrades officially underway at 10.01 a.m. Central Time, 11.01 a.m. Eastern Time. Artemiev and Medveyev now in the midst of uh, the first spacewalk of several that they will conduct in support of the European uh, robotic arms activation and operation. The uh, start time, 10.01 a.m. Central, 11.01 a.m. Eastern Time. start installing the protective ring. Yes, go ahead and install the protective ring. Uh, please retrieve uh, the uh, protective ring uh, from its storage location. Uh, yes, we have done that already. You see, there they are. Yes, uh, I can see it now. So take a look. It, it should the uh, mark should be on the other side. Can you see it? Yes. So let's uh, let's give it a try. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me pull it some. All right. So the protective ring is now installed and secured. And the first task uh, having been completed quickly are. Temiev and Madveyev installing a protective ring around uh, the hatch to the Poisk airlock. This designed uh, to ensure that uh, no impacts from uh, any micrometeoroid uh, debris particles impinge on the integrity of the airlock seal. Madveyev will be the first uh, to leave the Poisk airlock. Again, he'll be wearing the suit with the blue stripes, helmet camera number 20. Art, uh, Artemiev will follow, wearing uh, the suit with the red stripes, helmet camera number 16. And, uh, let me uh, check where, in what direction we should uh, translate. Okay, so I have installed the short one uh, on the outside. And uh, let me get the long one. Oleg, Denis. Protective ring has been installed and secured, and the Dennis is uh, uh, half uh, way of outside already. Oleg, like Dennis, how copy? Yes, we copy you loud and clear. Uh, we noticed that something came out of the hatch. Did you uh, see what it was? It was a piece of Velcro and a piece of rubber from... Well, it wasn't uh, holding anything. It was just uh, sitting there somewhere. 
go ahead and turn on the sublimator. I, yes, it's, it is uh, indeed getting hot. Oleg. Oleg, did you install the ring? Yes, so just uh, to repeat, the ring has been installed and Denise is halfway outside. We're standing by for uh, the sublimator activation. Alex. Did you copy? Alex. Oleg, yes, go ahead. Uh, Oleg, uh, how uh, is the temperature in your suit? Well, it's uh, quite warm. I guess uh, uh, we need to turn on the sublimator. Uh, yes, go ahead and uh, uh, turn it on uh, first. Okay. The sublimator is on. And uh, put it on three uh, to begin with. Okay, it is uh, set on three. Uh, okay, so let's uh, just wait now and uh, uh, please report uh, when you feel that it, uh, it has begun uh, cooling down. Uh, yes, we'll do. Денис. Денис, uh, yes, Ты уже на выходном устройстве, да? Денис? Денис. I'm half uh, uh, way out uh, of the EV hatch and I'm sending by for uh, your go to turn on the sublimator. Yes. Uh, your go and uh, you can also uh, set it to 3. Okay, you said three. The sublimators are on. And now we will tra uh, start translating towards the uh, operator post. Copy. Flying over western Algeria from northwest to southeast. A view of uh, Denis Matveyev outside of the Poisk module beginning the first spacewalk of his career less than a month after arriving at the International Space Station along with Oleg Artemiev, who will be joining him outside momentarily, and uh, Sergei Korsakov, who is inside, uh, who helped uh, the two cosmonauts suit up today. Very reliably, and uh, it is locked with uh, two locks. So it's all well and good. Excellent. Artemiev will be passing a crew lock bag uh, to uh, Matveyev, in which is the uh, European uh, robotic arm spacewalk control panel device that uh, the two uh, crew members will spend uh, a, considerable, a considerable amount of time today installing and checking out uh, in the first step on the road to activating and uh, beginning uh, the maneuvering of the European robotic arm, its first motion expected during the next spacewalk by these two cosmonauts on April 28th. Uh, uh, hand you the, uh, I guess, the control unit. Uh, Denis, you need to move closer to the operator post because uh, uh, Oleg uh, will start translating uh, there as well. Okay, sounds good. You need to uh, move in the opposite direction towards the operator post, towards the uh, throw boom. Just move up. I'm 
Denise, let's pause uh, for now and make sure that you have time to adapt. All right, I'm ready now. So now you are in the correct position. Stop. Uh, give yourself some time to adapt. Uh, we are uh, seeing you through the cameras. And, uh, and make sure uh, that uh, you uh, are translating slowly and move about slowly to save yourself the manager. Okay. And Oleg, you can start setting up mm, not well. It is already outside. I have already taken it out. Excellent. So uh, give yourself some time to adapt to the environment, and we'll take it from there. Okay, sounds good. Oleg, inaudible. Say again. What came out through the hatch just now? I wasn't looking there. I'm monitoring the control unit now, but nothing serious, I guess. Because we have everything we need, and nothing for now has floated away. Denis, how are you? Great. Are you hot? Denis, have you adapted to the environment? Uh, we are taking out the Amy. EMMI. And the control pa panel is now outside of the uh, uh, hatchway. And uh, Oleg Artemiev now outside of the Poisk airlock, uh, having joined Matveyev along with the crew lock bag in which uh, are tools, other equipment uh, to support today's spacewalk, and most importantly, the uh, European robotic arm spacewalk control panel box. And uh, make sure that uh, you take out the uh, PRM adapter. Uh, all right, sounds good. Denis, where are you? I'm here. All right. And your equipment tether is now secured. Uh, yes, it, it is secured. So both are secured. And you can see uh, right behind the Strela boom, uh, the rectangular box that Madveyev is holding. That is the enclosure for the uh, control panel box for the European robotic arm that will be mounted and installed and hooked up to electrical cables and data cables on the outside of the multipurpose laboratory module later in today's spacewalk. Uh, it is all secured well. Okay. Excellent. Uh, okay, so I am. Uh, I will now start translating and moving the param adapter. Okay. Uh, let's move it closer. And uh, also, guys, make sure that you uh, visually build the path, uh, the translation path that uh, you're going to use. Okay. Uh, Denise, you will be near the uh, operator post until Oleg is uh, finished taking everything out. 
Genius, please do not move away. Please wait for me. All right, I'm uh, standing by now. Uh, and uh, so, Denis, uh, take this time to adapt to the environment while Oleg is uh, working with the Ethereum adapter. So, how how does it feel? How do you feel? Can you share? Well, it's uh, interesting. <laughs> So I guess it's just uh, the temperature that's uh, yeah, high. Uh, we, we didn't. Is, uh, we did not uh, copy all it, but I think that uh, it's, it is already cooling down. Yes, the gas temperature, indeed, there is such a criteria, criterion, and it should be lower at this point, but we'll keep monitoring. The International Space Station flying over Western Africa at an altitude of 261 statute miles. On the left side of your screen is the Northrop Grumman Cygnus cargo vehicle. Overall. In the middle is the uh, Rosviet module on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the station, and on the right is the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module. Atop which is the uh, bulbous uh, Prishal node module, and docked to it, the Soyuz MS-21 that transported Oleg Artemyev, Denis Matveyev, and Sergei Korsakov to the International Space Station about uh, a month ago. Regulator, uh, it, it should be in the central position and set to three. Also, you can both activate automated thermal control system. All right, activate an ICER automated thermal control system. Mine is also on copy. They're coming out from underneath the panels. Okay. Uh, what uh, what just came out? It's a rubber seal uh, that came out from underneath the panel, and I did see that. So what about the adapter, param adapter, is a bit closer now? And I secured it to make sure it doesn't uh, fall away. Well, start moving now. Yes, uh, you can uh, start uh, translating now. It's beautiful out here. Okay, I need to turn this off. We, we don't need it. Uh, the fixed length uh, tether hook is uh, outside. 
And uh, adjustable um, is also outside, so both the tethers are outside now. And uh, when uh, should we turn on the camera or something else? Well, since they're out now, you can go ahead and turn on the cameras. I got tangled up uh, somehow. Yeah. Stand by. The camera is on. Uh, okay. But I can uh, I, I, I can see it now. Maybe Oleg uh, can uh, check it out later. Do not turn on the camera yet. Do not turn on the cameras yet. Oleg, Denis. Oleg, Denis. Uh, you, you can put the temperature reg regulator handle to uh, zero. For both of you, please uh, put it to uh, zero. Uh, EV2 is uh, at uh, zero. Copy. Now uh, you're going to turn on the cameras. Activating the cameras now. Okay. My uh, sublimator is now at uh, zero. Uh, I mean the uh, heat exchanger uh, handle. Copy. EV2 uh, confirms that uh, two camera LEDs are illuminated. Yeah, Oleg, yes, go ahead. The big one is uh, below and the small one. I just can sit here. Are they illuminated? Yes, so, so both cameras are on. Is that correct? Yes, so cameras for EV1 and EV2 are on. All right, so I'll start securing the equipment. Uh, and uh, please secure uh, crew log bags on uh, your, your tethers. The uh, oxygen uh, flow rate is 80, inaudible. Again, go ahead. Isn't there anything in the way or not? There's a short tether here. Okay, here it is. And uh, you can uh, also secure EMI on your short tether as well. This view uh, from a balcony camera in the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow. We are 23 minutes into uh, today's spacewalk by Artemyev and Matveyev. Artemyev still passing equipment out of the Poisk airlock to Matveyev as they stage all of their equipment, including uh, the enclosure box uh, in which uh, the European Robotic Arm Spacewalk Control Panel is located. That is uh, the focus of attention in the early portion of today's spacewalk, uh, in which the two cosmonauts will attach and hook up that uh, critical control panel uh, to uh, a base point 
an operating point on the uh, Naoka multipurpose laboratory module. They will use the Strela boom uh, to make their way uh, from the Poisk airlock all the way up to Naoka, which will be their workstation for the entire spacewalk today. The uh, with the large uh, hook is uh, installed, uh, is secured on the uh, suit tether, and then the other one is uh, uh, now secured on swing arm. Will it work? Yes. And and I'll uh, install the EMMI equipment tether on uh, your tether. Yes, I can see it. It's right here. And also uh, make sure that uh, you check the uh, adapter on the outside. Yes, I can see it now. And the wind nut is uh, uh, also tightened. And Oleg, inaudible, please monitor the EMI position. Uh, yes, I, I'm holding it. And a view of uh, Oleg Artemiev uh, wearing the suit with the red stripes outside of the Poisk airlock at the early uh, portion of his fourth spacewalk of his career. The two cosmonauts will soon make their way up that Strela boom that you see between them to the uh, workstation, the work site on the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module that arrived at the International Space Station with the European robotic arm last July. The tether hook is now secured on the fixed length tether. Copy, and uh, EV2 confirms the same config. Copy. Uh, copy, Oleg. And Denise, are you holding it? Do you have it? Uh, yes, I uh, do. And if you are ready, please uh, start moving towards the uh, STU. Uh, so, uh, start uh, moving. Uh, towards uh, the uh, MLM on S2. Uh, uh, Oleg and Denis, uh, just heads up, we're coming up on an eclipse in about two to three minutes. Yes, uh, and my uh, adjustable length tether is secured on the ring. Copy. And what about the ring? The ring is uh, on the tether. Okay, that's good. This is Mission Control Houston, as is uh, often the case uh, with the Russian spacewalk. The uh, start time of today's spacewalk has been slightly adjusted. The official start time that we've just received from Russian flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center, now 10 a.m. Central Time straight up. 10 a.m. Central Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. So we are coming up on the 29-minute mark in today's spacewalk for about uh, uh, five minutes or so. So just continue translation uh, towards uh, the uh, MRM. Copy. Okay, uh, move closer. And, uh, and I'm just gonna uh, hang here for now uh, to make sure that uh, it works for you. Oleg Denis. Go ahead, Moscow. While you're in eclipse, you have a go to turn on uh, Orlan or 
U.S. Uh, lights uh, to for better illumination. Well, thank you, Moscow, for that. The uh, two cosmonauts uh, about to uh, turn on their helmet cameras and then begin uh, to make their way up the Strela boom to the uh, Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory module now that they've collected all of their equipment, including the European Robotic Arm Control Panel box that will be installed uh, on a uh, equipment point, a base point, on uh, the multipurpose laboratory module and hooked up electrically with data cables and electrical cables so that uh, the Russian flight controllers can conduct a systems check and a health check of that new equipment. Again, the uh, start time of today's spacewalk slightly adjusted. We are now officially marking uh, the start time with hatch open at 10 a.m. Central, 11 a.m. Eastern time. There you go. Where are you? I'm right here. Don't push it. Don't push it. Okay. I've got the um, French hook. Stand by. And I have it attached to the ring. Great, and let me give you my small, short tether. Are you, uh, do you, you've got the EMMI? Yes. Hold it. Holding it. And I have you secured to the ring. Now we need to um, open up the ring. Well, let's not forget about the lights. I turn them on then, meanwhile. Stand by. We need to take off this um, tether. And where do you want me? Leave it somewhere. Somewhere you have a place to secure it to. Oleg? This is Moscow. Dennis Oleg. Have you opened up that ring? Yes. We have it free. And now we are rolling. Okay, so you are moving on to MLM. Please do not forget to secure your safety tether to the ring. Dennis, hold on. There you go. Dennis has the EMMI, and I am checking along and moving. Now, we need to round it out. Hold on, don't move. Guys, be careful about the Pahoa. There is a target there, so please be aware. Dennis, stand by. I'm not seeing it. Don't, no rush. I'm standing. Artemiev and Medveyev now making their way up the uh, Strela boom, the 50-foot-long telescoping boom that is used uh, as a uh, translation path for cosmonauts uh, conducting spacewalks out of the International Space Station's Russian segment. They will arrive at the work site on the Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory module shortly and uh, will begin yeah, to set up all of their gear at that work site for the uh, temporary stowage of the uh, European robotic arm control panel box prior to its installation onto the surface of Naoka. Wow. We're kind of far. Now. Move up a little bit. Hold on. Why do I, I don't need to go all the way up? And that very top is pretty far away. Okay, guys, we've got the video back. When you get to the Strela, boom. And we see that you are almost at MLM. Yes, we are almost there. We're almost there, and we are receiving video from your cameras, right? And we have the lights. And uh, the first view from the helmet camera of Oleg Artemiev 
who soon will become the commander of the International Space Station. Okay. The day prior to the Crew-3 undocking, he'll be taking over command of the station from NASA astronaut Tom Marshburn. You need to and secure the tether from the crew lock bag and secure it to the uh, MLM handrail. Well, I'm thinking that first first we need to kind of dock here. Right, of course, you need to stop till full stop and then secure the tether. Right. So I am secured with one tether to the MLM module. It's uh, blinking here. We should probably need. Uh, we should probably secure it in some other way. Hold on. Hold the MMI, Oleg. Oleg, if you have the time available, let's think how we can secure it better. And now, please continue moving. We are on the same page. I'm not saying anything here. I'm just uh, securing uh, the crew lock bag a little bit better so that I can take the adjustable tether. Copy, Oleg. There, Dennis, I'm here. Hold this ring here. And we're securing it with a to the handrail. Okay, let me. Hook it right here. Now we've got it all secure. And I'm thinking, should I connect, should I leave it here or to the handrail over there, or should we stick to just one handrail? Well, just uh, make sure that the ring doesn't slide. Okay, we have the ring secured. Perfect, Oleg. Okay, we got one less thing to worry about. And now... Now we'll continue moving. All right, our legs are going to be in that direction. Understood. Uh, we are at handrail 4,100. Okay, can you unhook my French hook? Thank you. A big thank you. Now, let me secure it a little bit further, and I'll come back to you. There we go. We see it, guys. Okay, it's a little bit tangled, like it got a little bit tangled up here. So, I am switching the ring to over here. There, there. Let me move a little bit further. Now, look. It's tangled to this little thingy here. There. And uh, that's really convenient with zero G. Do you have the EMMI? Here is the EMMI. Slow, slow. Okay, that's uh let me see. Okay, could you hold the MMI for now? Got it. Thank you. Yes. 
Yeah. Unintelligible. And we'll hook it right here. Hold, hold. Okay, I'm holding it, and you start translating. So, Oleg, both of you are on MLM right now. Is that correct? No. I am currently handling the EMMI, and Dennis is switching to the handrails. Um, and once he's there, he will be able to take over, and I will translate as well. Go ahead. And Oleg, please don't forget to about the safety and that you need to be secured. Okay. No. Hold the EMMI. Got it. Hold on. And let's move it a little bit further. And let's use this little handrail, teeny. There. Okay, I got it. And let's uh, switch the hook to here. Okay, so Oleg, you are we see the you are on MLM and you are ready to translate. Yes, we're taking it slow and steady. I'm on forty one. Zero three and Dennis is uh, forty one zero one. That's where he's um, secured. Copy. You got the EMMI. I got it. Dennis, Oleg, how are you? Dennis, could you check that you have both lights on? Dennis, please check that you've got both lights on. All right. We only have one light for U.S. lights on. Uh, I only have the right one. And I have the Russian light, the old one lights on. Is it enough light for you, or do you want to take a break and make sure that all of the lights are working? Oleg, would you be able to assist Dennis? Of course I will be. No, 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 don't worry. I'm fine. So, do you need more light, Dennis? I'm fine. 
Why do you? This is Mission Control Houston, 45 minutes into uh, today's spacewalk that began at 10 a.m. Central, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. The two cosmonauts, Oleg Artemiev and uh, Denis Matveyev, are at the work site along the Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory module that arrived at the International Space Station last July. Artemiev, uh, currently at the top of your screen, is currently holding uh, the European robotic arm control panel box that will be installed and tested today during the spacewalk. This is the 249th spacewalk in support of space station assembly and maintenance, as well as upgrades. Uh, AC system and the temperature is very, very comfortable and really good temperature controls. How for you, Dennis? Uh, we're glad. I'm going to 4107 and I'm monitoring the um, EMMI. Dennis is here. He is handing me the kit over and will continue to translate. Copy. Hold on. There is a little, it's a little tricky here. Be careful, don't um, touch the antenna with your head. Okay, I am one more flight down, so to say, a section. All right, 4110. Yeah. And we got the Oleg. And 4109. That's where I am. I am I am here next to Bad L three, Aero Base Point Three. Be Oleg be mindful how much you are spending the battery. I'm uh forty one um eleven and forty one twelve and I'm monitoring the whole process. Okay. I got it. The EMMI. Now here, be careful. This um, this path here is pretty challenging, so mind the tethers. How goes it? Not bad. Right there, this one. And we can just uh, move there straight away. This is Mission Control Houston, a good view up the uh, Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory module. Did you leave it too? Artemiev in the red stripes uh, at the top of the two cosmonauts, Matveyev at the bottom. There we go. They're holding uh, the uh, European robotic arm control panel. And you can see uh, All right. Hold this. two of the base points, as they're called. Uh, this is where uh, the thermal covers are currently covering uh, grapple fixtures to which the European robotic arm ultimately will be affixed to uh, during the next spacewalk when it uh, begins its first motion away from its stowed position on the multipurpose laboratory module. Lightning. At the very top of your screen is the Prashal node module that arrived at the International Space Station last November. And uh, out of the field of view, but uh, docked to Prashal is the Soyuz MS-21 that transported Artemiev, Matveyev, and Sergei Korsakov to the station about a month ago. Uh, take it over from you. 
Dennis, while Oleg is translating, please check that uh, you should have a BTL there, and it needs to be secured. Yes, there is this like a bow tie that's securing it, so I can just untie it if need be. Copy. Okay. Let's uh, let's deal with that later. Also, guys, be careful. Solar rays. Solar rays. Yeah, we'll deal with the better later. Yeah, agreed. Now, I've got the um, EMMI 4114 and 4559, and we are at UFP payload interface 2. And we are almost at the pressurized adapter. And Dennis is translating, and I am monitoring the um, EMMI kit. The uh, reference that you're hearing through the interpreter to EMMI is the acronym that is uh, attached to the uh, European Robotic Arm Spacewalk Control Panel. They will soon be installing that uh, on a tray adapter along a handrail on the uh, Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory module as the two cosmonauts work in tandem approaching the one hour mark into today's spacewalk. Over the um, EMMI to him. There we go. Oh, and here are the thrusters. Pretty clean. Guys, try not to try and not touch them. No contact with any of the thrusters. We'll do our best. But it's so tempting. Okay. Now, I'm at 4400, 4562, and 4562. And give me the EMMI. Hold on, hold on. Let me get it from you. Now, I've got it. And I'm translating. Sounds good. 4400, and it's going to be strut number three. And the thrusters are so shiny and like so tempting to touch them. So we are near support three. Okay, Dennis, turn turn your legs back, turn, turn your feet back, and move over to me uh, head first. Wow, that's beautiful. Dennis, uh, be mindful. Um, of the thrusters, Oleg just told us that um, there is some lubricating oil on them. Okay, so Dennis is secured to 4561, and I'm on 4562 handrail, secured. Now, um, please take this Olympic torch from me, the EMMI. There we go. Slow and steady makes it. Sure. 
4564. Uh, 4401 is in no-go handrail. Yes, and just uh, be careful. Moss is unintelligible. Okay. Oleg? All right. I, I'm at this hand right at 4401. Dennis, maybe it's best if you uh, switch to SBT. So ahead of Oleg? No, no, no. Hold on. And don't let the EMMI go. And don't leave. Okay. Sergey. Which tether do we leave? Do we leave the adjustable tether red or just the red? You leave a safety tether on handrail 4401. So two locks that are securing the cover, the top of the cover. Okay. All right, let's turn it towards me. And where is the handrail? Okay, we're getting to the handrail. Here is the handrail. Hold it. Stop, stop, stop. Turn it in such a way that uh, both locks of the uh, top of the cover are towards Pecho. Copy Moscow. So let's uh, switch to 4400 meanwhile. We will have time to orient it, as you are telling us, but let's figure it out what we are doing with the tray adapter for now, like uh, do what we need. Okay, you've got it. I got it. Hold it. Oleg, Dennis. So... There is about five minutes left in the eclipse, and then you will be in the sunrise. Now hold it. And we need to switch the point where we are secured, where we have it secured. Okay. Так. There. Так, okay, and now the tray adapter, and the tray adapter is secured. Okay. Oleg, you have it secured, right? Of course. We have the EMMI secured to 4401. And now we are looking for something to secure the... So, so you are ready to start working with the tray adapter? We are getting ready. Copy. We will. We are getting ready to work with the tray adapter. Coming up on the one-hour mark in uh, today's spacewalk, Artemiev and Matveyev about to install a tray adapter on a fixture outside of the uh, multi-purpose laboratory module upon which the European robotic arm control panel will be installed, and electrical and data cables will be hooked up to that control panel for the initial testing of its operability 
by Russian flight controllers uh, at the Russian Mission Control Center. So the adapter uh, tray adapter is removed uh, from the handrail. Copy, Alec. We install it on the handrail. And the equipment tether should be between the adapter and the bracket. So what about the wing nut? Uh, what uh, direction it should be oriented? You know, it is actually at your discretion, Alex, so that it is convenient for you to work with it, with this wing nut. Okay. So you will remove it, and uh, the um, all the pin should be directed at you. Okay. Uh, should I use the ratchet wrench here? Yes, uh, you should tighten it. Uh, a few rotations with the ratchet wrench. I copy. So I am retrieving the ratchet wrench. Dennis, in the meantime. No, you don't have to do anything, Dennis. Uh, disregard. Okay, just one minute before the uh, sunrise. So I am removing the rated range. It is removed. Copy, Alec. Alec, and don't forget to bring the red, which was the adapter for the drone. Alec, don't. Forget uh, to retrieve also the red tether that uh, used to secure the tray adapter. Just over an hour into uh, today's spacewalk, Oleg Artemiev and Denis Matveyev. Artemiev on the bottom of the two uh, cosmonauts in this view. Matveyev uh, just above him as they work to install a um, adapter tray upon which the European robotic arm control panel will be installed as the first uh, major task of today's spacewalk, the first of several, perhaps up to a half a dozen or more, that uh, will activate and operate the European robotic arm in the first uh, also, phase of uh, its activity to augment uh, the Canadarm2 robotic arm and the Japanese robotic arm that operate on the U.S. segment of the International Space Station. This European robotic arm was uh, launched on the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module. The next spacewalk, 10 days from now, on April 28th, will see these two cosmonauts uh, releasing a number of launch locks and launch restraints and begin the process of uh, monitoring the arm's first tentative steps away from its launch and stowed position to uh, other base points upon which uh, it will grapple on either end of two grapple fixtures. Uh, basically uh, the same concept as the Canadarm2 robotic arm with two end effectors that can uh, grapple uh, various grapple points uh, along the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module to provide uh, additional robotic capability to move people and payloads around the Russian segment of the complex. The station is about to enter an orbital sunrise over the Pacific Ocean, moving from southwest to northeast. The uh, two spacewalkers, after a slight delay in getting out of the uh, Poisk airlock, are right on the timeline of their activities uh, from that point uh, on. That is pulling me here. 
just a minute. It is secured uh, with a magnetic lock. Good. Now we will connect it. Now, Alec, you will have uh, to move to SBT, a launch base point area, and unfold uh, uh, MLI, and uh, then work with the connectors there. Okay, I guess we don't need the lights here. The light is off, OFF. Okay, I'm uh, moving away uh, to give you space, Dennis. Yes, just like that. Will you be able to squeeze in? Dennis, please be careful with your feet so that uh, don't uh, break the panel. Stand by. So the, my kit is in the way here. That's it. That's it. Now go ahead. Here you go. Excellent. Alec, uh, so please check whether the adjustable tether uh, should be used here. Stand by one. I will check. Adjustable tether. So that it does not uh, move er about. Yes, that's correct. And the hook is uh, secured to the 104401. Maybe it will be best uh, to secure it to a different handrail. So we will take it with us, correct? Or we will leave it there? No, you will leave it there. Actually, both deserts, deserts should be left there for during the EV number 54. We will need uh, those in order to uh, move the panel. But it will be later on, much later. All right. So I am leaving these deserts in place. So, you will uh, connect the connector H2, but uh, first of all, you will have to release them, and uh, there is a locking wire there that you will have uh, to cut, because they are right now behind, uh, beneath uh, the MLI cover. Unintelligible. Dennis, you will have to translate to SBT launch base point area. Dennis, you are too far away. You are too far up. You will have to move. Okay. I am giving you. I'm moving in order to give you more space, Dennis. And I am uh, unfolding the cable. 
Then is so this MLI flap uh, should be moved upwards and uh, so that you can see the H2 connectors there. One hour, ten minutes into today's spacewalk, Matveyev and Artemiev working uh, at what is called the launch base point, where the uh, European robotic arm uh, was stowed uh, during its launch, affixed uh, to the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module when it took off on a Proton M rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan last July. They're in the process of opening up uh, thermal covers and uh, the cover to the European robotic arm control panel box so that uh, they can begin uh, to hook up uh, the first of several connectors that will provide electrical and data capability to the box for commanding from the Russian mission control center outside of Korolyov. The commanding capability also is routed so that uh, cosmonauts working inside the Russian segment of the station can maneuver that arm around once its outfitting is completed over the course of several spacewalks. Unintelligible. So there are some two, uh, two marks, yes, uh, but also there should be a number two. Please look uh, at the other side. And on the opposite side, uh, there is the barcode. And the view you're seeing of uh, Artemiev and Matveyev working uh, on the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module is from a camcorder set up inside the Zvezda service module by cosmonaut Sergei Korsakov, who is acting as uh, an intravehicular crew member supporting uh, the spacewalk from inside the Russian segment of the station. So the cable is uh, untied now. Copy. Alec, a reminder. You are in the area of these thrusters, and please, uh, under no circumstances, touch these thrusters. Dennis, hold it. Don't, don't pull it. Please now show me where are you going to connect it. Yes. Yeah, you will have to do it uh, in such a way that it is routed properly and connected well. Maybe it should be rotated a little bit, moved around. Now I am holding it. Yes, that's great. That's exactly. Okay, sorry. I took it from you again. Now. You saw a wire tie here. Before you connect the cable, please make sure that uh, all the markings are proper. Yes, the big contact is opposite the pip pin. 
Well, Dennis, that's exactly the configuration that we need. All right, Dennis, it's a go to mate the connectors. Alec, in the meantime, you can op start opening the MLI. You know, I think I should secure this wire tie beforehand so that cable does not move around a lot. Yes. You can do that, and after you are done with that, you can start opening the outer cover. So I secured it with the hook. Yes, Dennis, you are doing everything correctly. I am opening the upper outer cover. Uh, unintelligible. One hour, 15 minutes into uh, the spacewalk by Artemiev and Matveyev. Artemiev uh, at the bottom, Matveyev at the top as they are in the process of now opening uh, the uh, suitcase-like EMMI, that's the acronym for the European Robotic Arm Spacewalk Control Panel Box that will be mounted on a tray adapter. They're in the process of installing on the outside of the Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory Module. Please make sure that... They'll be uh, hooking up a number of connectors uh, for both electrical and data capability that will be tested uh, during the course of today's spacewalk with uh, some <coughs> preliminary commanding that will be uh, provided by the Russian flight control team uh, outside of Karyov. At the very top of your screen is the Prashal node module, the six docking port bulbous module that arrived at the station and docked to Naoka last November, and uh, upon which the Soyuz MS-21 spacecraft is currently docked. In just a few minutes, uh, the media channel of NASA television, uh, we're currently simulcasting on both the public and the media channel of NASA TV, the media channel is going to go down to the Kennedy Space Center in Florida for today's arrival of the crew four astronauts, Chell Lindgren, Bob Hines, Jessica Watkins, and Samantha Cristoforetti, who left uh, Ellington Field outside of the Johnson Space Center here in Houston this morning and are uh, approaching uh, the landing strip at the Kennedy Space Center where they will uh, continue uh, their quarantine uh, before their scheduled launch this coming Saturday on their Crew Dragon Freedom to the International Space Station on the start of their own six-month mission. Once uh, the arrival activities uh, down at KSC are complete, uh, the media channel will rejoin us on the public channel for simulcasting of the rest of today's spacewalk. Alex, stand by one. So, Denise, did you manage to reload the camera? Yes, the LED is on. Are you receiving the image from my camera? Yes, we are, Dennis. Dennis, you can now move to the plane one to, for the removal of the protective covers. Uh, now, 60, 45, 62, 51 rail, handrails. Yes, that's correct. Okay, so the, please confirm that the panel is on, it is operating, it is on. I confirm that green LED is on, the power is also green, and the parameters, MMI 1, English status, now, menu, start, config, stop, copy, Alec. Then by what? 
uh, once uh, we receive the confirmation, we will give you a go to work uh, with the covers. Sergey, what about the time? How are we on the time of the day? Everything is good. You are uh, following the cyclogram almost exactly to the minute. All right. Thank you. Now I will translate here. This is Dennis. Copy. Stand by one. Олег, uh, we'll start uh, loading MMI uh, to the internal bus. Okay, internal bus. So, so I am working on the fuel card that is on the left, correct? This is Mission Control Houston, one hour, 20 minutes into the spacewalk. Uh, good news being reported out of the Russian Mission Control Center in Korolyov that uh, the newly installed European Robotic Arm Control Panel box is receiving power through the uh, connecting uh, of a series of cables, both electrical and data cables, further testing uh, to be conducted throughout the course of the spacewalk as you watch Denis Matveyev on the right, Oleg Artemiev on the left, as they uh, are continuing uh, to hook up various uh, pieces of equipment to that uh, control box that will, as uh, the name implies, uh, control the operation and movement of the European robotic arm from one location to another along the Russian segment of the International Space Station. Alec, when you start working with the external panel, so every movement should be reported, every move, every message that you receive. Copy. I understand. So, MMI initialization on the internal bus cue card. Uh, yes, and I am starting working the steps. Step number one. So this auto menu, um, MMI configuration. Copy, Alec. So I'm pressing the stop button according to step number two. Is it a go? Yes, we give you a go. You can press the button. And uh, hold it down for two seconds. Okay, hold it down for, for two seconds. Now I have and with power uh, now flowing into the uh, European robotic arm control panel, the two cosmonauts are in the process of uh, performing a health check on the unit, basically a self-diagnostic test. Yes, that's correct. Number of the step is number is four, Alec. Copy. So now I'm at step five on the display. I can see menu of the configuration of 1553 bus, and I'm selecting start. Copy, Alec. Uh, everything is correct. I press start button. On the menu display, I can see ID selection option, and I am selecting uh, ID 1, and I'm pressing the button, and I'm standing by for checkups, uh, not, not more than one minute. Yes, that's right. Uh, so checkout is uh, progressing. And I can see the displays. They all are illuminated. Okay, Dennis, uh, let's give you a report. Uh, unintelligible 14, the last two digits of the handrail. I am going down. So this is Alec. The checkups of the display is continuing. Copy Alec. So MMI 1 English is selected. I can see it on display. Copy, Alec. Thank you. Так, 
Есть предложение назвать старт. Now there is a suggestion to to press start button. Yes, we give you a go, Alek. You can press start. Uh, the button start is pressed. Yes, назвал start. I have pressed the button start, and now it tells me to press stop button. Copy, Alek. You, it's a go to press stop button in work. So it is done. Now, now the uh, suggestion is to press emergency button. Yes, uh, you give, you have a go. I am pressing emergency button. It is done. Now uh, it suggests that I do release emergency. Yes, that's correct. So I am uh, Moving the switch uh, to and the, the displays are not illuminated anymore, and I can see the display with uh, the coordinates. And uh, so we, I have uh, the coordinates lines here, and the LED is one, and now uh, MMI and internal uh, bus, everything is illuminated. Uh, well done, Alek. So the loading of uh, the MMI uh, on the internal bus is complete. Alek, well done. Now you will, uh, we will we'll stand by for the next confirmation, and you can have a rest, Alek. And, Alek, a reminder, the emergency switch should not be uh, touched or pressed. Uh, you mean I can do it on your go, but I cannot do it in the, uh, in the meantime, correct? You know, it can be pressed only during the emergency. It uh, should not be pressed in any other uh, situation. Oh, copy that. Denise, we can see that you are on BTL 3. Yes, now please secure the cover. Copy. And this removed cover from H2 connector, uh, Sergei, where should I put it? Into the bag? Dennis, secure it uh, to some uh, available uh, hook in the cap keeper. Okay, we'll do. So, Denise, uh, how are you doing? So, please go ahead on the space ground one. Sergey, we ask you to answer on space ground one. You know, they are looking for Sergey, uh, uh, maybe somewhere doing in the uh, math room or in the kitchen. Okay, you can, in the meantime, uh, you can take pictures of the panel. We are flying over Canada. This is Alec. This is Canada below. So you mean to take pictures, you mean to activate the camera, Sergei? Yes, that's correct. If, uh, uh, you know, you, you want, uh, you can do it. Well, I'm working only on your go and your command. Yes, Alek, we give you a go also to take uh pictures of the cable, uh, and also we, will, we would like to see how the uh, external panel is installed, the installation configuration. All right. Uh, Denis, uh, okay, never mind, I can see it now. 
Ну, в общем, он был заряжен на банчик, а под банчиком узел. Well, uh, it was... Ты этот узел срезал, правильно? Tightened in a knot. Uh, and uh, did you cut it off? Yes. Отлично. Теперь смотри, как тебе удобнее. Или на Вейкип Кипер. And uh, uh, now... Uh, you can uh, do what works best for you. You can either use the cap keeper or you can still in the trash bag. The weather is so nice today. Do you I'm filming you? Okay, this is Denise. Uh, I have removed it from the uh, SBT launch this point. Okay. Move to uh, the second point, and you please remove two covers there. Так, и это разъем тоже заснять, да? Should I film the connector as well? Yes, Oleg, uh, please go ahead and do that, too. So let me open up the cover, then. There it goes. Okay, let me uh, go back there. I forgot to uh, take pictures of the connector. Well, actually, I'm doing that already. Okay, so I'm going to proceed with the second one, then. Okay, it is uh, very well connected. And uh, we're going to have to remove these covers uh, at some point, right? Uh, yes, Oleg, uh, we're going to remove these covers uh, during the next uh, EVA. Uh, well, I see that uh, uh, there are no ties or anything uh, else here. Okay, yes, uh, we'll be able to uh, open it up easily. All right, Oleg. Uh, so I guess uh, we're going to save battery power. Uh, yes, uh, you can go ahead and turn it off. 22, 23. It is off, uh, and uh, also I checked that uh, it uh, got turned off. Uh, copy all. This is Mission Control Houston, an hour and 33 minutes and change into uh, today's spacewalk by Artemiev and Matveyev. They are right on the timeline, in fact, uh, slightly ahead of the timeline, even though they began the spacewalk a few minutes uh, behind schedule. They uh, have already uh, connected uh, the European robotic arm control panel box to a tray adapter on the uh, Naoka multipurpose laboratory module. It is receiving power. They are in the process of uh, checking out uh, self-diagnostic health messages and are beginning the process of removing some protective covers from the area and uh, the launch base points upon which 
The uh, European robotic arm was affixed during its launch on Naoka back in July of last year. Go ahead and stow uh, the cutter in the tool kitty. Uh, we aren't going to need it during uh, this uh, uh, operation here. Uh, we're going to need it to add uh, uh, the next uh, point. Okay, copy that. Uh, uh, Denise, would it make sense to... Yes, go ahead. Maybe it would make sense to uh, drop the uh, small hook uh, on the uh, cap keeper case. Yes, I guess that would work. Otherwise, it's just uh, not that uh, convenient here. And uh, did you have a question about the uh, hatch? The, the time of uh, hatch opening was uh, 15.01. Uh, so uh, we've been outside uh, 1.5 hours. Uh, yes, and to be exact, it's been uh, 1 hour and 35 minutes outside. All right, Denise. Uh, and uh, now, please uh, proceed with uh, taking photographs. It's some work. Oleg, and uh, you can rest for about five minutes now. Should I help Denise? Uh, no, Oleg, uh, please stand by for now, and uh, we will uh, start your activities soon. And Denise, as soon as you're done with taking photographs, so maybe it would make sense for you to uh, rest as well. Well, uh, yes, I guess I could take five. All right. So uh, let's wait for uh, Sergey's confirmation, and once uh, he hands it over to Oleg, he, when he hands the control over to Oleg, uh, we will uh, proceed. Hope you all. Denise, uh, take a look. This is uh, our Soyuz. Uh, let me look around. Oh, yeah, I can see it now. Uh, Denise, uh, you're holding onto the rail uh, that you will use for translation to the parallel uh, handrail near the base point, too. So just take a look around now uh, to make sure that you know in what direction you will uh, be translating. Uh, yes, I can see it uh, from here. They are uh, across from me. Yes, uh, that is correct. They're in front of you. Okay, let me... The uh, view from uh, a variety of different cameras of today's spacewalk that is now one hour, 38 minutes in duration as Oleg Artemiev and Denise Medveyev have made quick work of the installation and initial checkout of the European robotic arm control panel. This is the control panel through which uh, commands will be sent to operate the arm, either from the Russian Mission Control Center or from the cosmonauts from a workstation inside the Russian segment of the station. Artemiev on the left, Matveyev on the right, and at the top of your screen, the Prashal node module to which the Soyuz MS-21 vehicle is attached that brought Artemiev, Matveyev, and Sergei Korsakov to the station a month ago. Okay. It's just uh, the fact that the sun is shining right on the card and uh, 
really not let me see anything, but I guess I'm going to wait for it to um, go away. Oleg, please repeat your last. What I'm saying is that the sun is shining right on the cue card and the filter is not sufficient. Well, uh, we follow uh, the activities uh, by the two cosmonauts in today's spacewalk, the 249th, in support of space station assembly maintenance and upgrades on the NASA TV media channel. The crew four astronauts, Chell Lindgren, Bob Hines, Jessica Watkins, and Samantha Cristoforetti have arrived at the Kennedy Space Center for final pre-launch preparations. You can follow that activity on the NASA TV media channel. You can start the exact same actions that you uh, just did, and then uh, we will be also working with uh, all eggs at that point. Denise, did you copy? Uh, yes, copy all. Uh, this is Denise. Oleg, uh, make sure that the external control uh, unit is in the manual mode. Uh, yes, I confirm that it is in manual mode. Manual mode, excellent coffee. And Russian flight controllers instructing the two cosmonauts to configure that uh, robotic arm control box into what is called the manual mode so it can uh, transfer to an automated sequence from uh, Korolyov, uh, part of the diagnostic testing of the control box and its functionality. Meanwhile, the International Space Station is flying uh, from northwest to southeast, approaching uh, the coast of Africa over Senegal. Uh, yes, I'm ready to uh, start the uh, activity with the control unit now. Okay, copy. Uh, okay, Oleg, uh, we'll put it in work now. Uh, please confirm again that uh, the unit is in manual mode. It is in manual mode. The LED for manual mode is illuminated. Copy. Switching to the second one, the uh, switch is uh, in operating position and uh, standby, copy. The LED is blinking and I'm now waiting for the standby mode and Inaudible. And did you get the message? Uh, yes, uh, I uh, just got the message. Uh, message inaudible. Uh, copy. Uh, I pressed on start, and the LED is now illuminated solid. And also, uh, Denise. Uh, be careful with the uh, cutter cord. Okay. All right, go ahead, please. Now number seven. I should get the SBO Pagayor message uh, after one minute from when I uh, first got the message on the display. Yes, we're standing by for that. Uh, I see the message uh, about the ERA mode, And also I see operation, standby. Stand by. Well, let's see. 
And Dennis, uh, uh, please assess if it would make sense now to uh, stow the crew log bag, uh, the covers in the crew log bag. Uh, yes, uh, I confirm that the LED is illuminated, the standby LED, and switching to uh, step nine in the table. Inaudible. I, I should see the messages in the middle uh, window, but they're not. Oleg, please uh, repeat your last. What are you seeing? In, in, step, in step nine, ten, uh, five, ten should be in the middle window. And now it says step four, ten. Uh, yes, it should be a uh, four. 10. Okay, so is there a, an error then? Uh, we uh, updated it prior to the EVA. Okay, so I will uh, press on, on the right and it just switch to the left window. The selected task should be in the left field. So this is done. 11, step 11 is done. Switching to uh, 12. Okay. The LED is blinking. Pressing on start. Uh, copy. Uh, go ahead and press start. Uh, I uh, was uh, holding it for two seconds, uh, and the uh, LEDs are solid, and I will press it then. Let's see what happens next. I see that the task is in progress. Task four uh, is complete now. And I see the following uh, in on the display C5 uh, in the middle window, and the cue card says T619. And I will press it with uh, step 15. Scroll to the right, selecting uh, the command. Task 5 is selected. It has switched to the left field. I think your uh, thumb was close to the emergency switch. Okay, copy that. LED is blinking near uh, the uh, start button, sending the start command uh, to execute task 5. Is that correct? Can you confirm? Uh, yes, go ahead and uh, uh, press on start. At the uh, one hour, 48 minute mark into the flight, as uh, the International Space Station crosses the west coast of Africa, a great view of the Earth uh, from the helmet cam of uh, one of the two cosmonauts, Artemiev and Matveyev, working uh, in tandem outside of the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module, conducting a series of diagnostic tests on the newly installed European robotic arm spacewalk control panel. Oh, all right, and you just uh, stow it uh, for now uh, with the cap keeper, uh, and then Oleg will uh, help you to put it in the bag. Okay, and uh, you can go on. Oleg, uh, go ahead now. Uh, task uh, five is now complete. I can now select task six. Copy. And uh, I am uh, selecting the commands on the right, that's correct. Task 6 is selected, and uh, I should now press start. This is step 22. 
Actually, 23 already. Go ahead and press start. All right, it's done. Okay. Well, let's see what we get now. The two cosmonauts uh, are in the process of uh, pushing a series of buttons on that control panel that you see here in the field of view that uh, essentially is a health check of various commands that uh, will be given in the future by either the cosmonauts from a control panel inside the Russian segment of the station or by Russian flight controllers at Korolyov uh, as they operate the robotic arm for a variety of tasks uh, to move payloads and people around on the outside of the multipurpose laboratory module. Uh, Denise, you can also take five. I will start translating slowly now. Well, uh, Denise, uh, if you feel tired, you should pause and rest. Denise, how is it going? I am now at uh, this point four, and now I'll start taking photographs. Well, I can't see you, Denise. Denise, inaudible. Near the MLM. Okay, copy. Denise, do you have it in your hands? Yes. So, what about the kit with the covers? Is it in the way? No, not really, if I move it slightly. I think you should uh, push it away uh, from yourself while uh, translating. Okay, Dennis. So to make sure it works better for you, uh, try removing the small cap first. Well, it doesn't really make much difference. Anyways, uh, uh, proceed uh, per your discretion, whatever works best for you, but make sure uh, you take pauses uh, to rest. Uh, Denise, uh, just a reminder of 
Well, please make sure you're monitoring the cutter. Make sure that it is inside its case uh, while you're translating. Okay, copy all. One hour, 54 minutes into uh, the spacewalk. Uh, the reports continue to come in from the Russian Mission Control Center, and they're all good uh, with uh, the diagnostic tests all so far having been completed successfully in uh, testing out the uh, health and uh, responsiveness of the newly installed European robotic arm control panel box. Once you're done cutting, please stow the cutter away in its uh, case. Well, it's uh, not that easy uh, to cut it uh, with it. Uh, it's sort of bunt. Well, we're going to sharpen when we get back. Uh, Denise, just uh, make sure that you're careful with it. Just go ahead and put it in its case right away. Okay. Uh, Oleg, uh, get ready uh, to start sending the commands. Copy. Getting ready. Moscow is inaudible. Caution is illuminated. Do not press anything for now. Uh, stand by for the command. Okay. And, uh, Denise, uh, what you have left to do is just remove uh, the cover uh, and uh, um, uh, from, from, from the grapple picture. Yes, correct. We're about to hit the uh, two-hour mark in today's spacewalk. Denise uh, Matveyev is removing protective covers 
from uh, a variety of payload interfaces on the uh, outside of the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module. The uh, European robotic arm, once it's fully operational, yes. which uh, will unfold over the course of the next several spacewalks by these two cosmonauts, will uh, move uh, various payloads to and from uh, their deployment points on the Russian segment of the International Space Station over to these payload interfaces to affix them to the outside of Naoka so that they can gather data. To uh, continue with the EMMI starts using uh, the internal bus. The moment you are ready, please um, let us know. I am ready. And I'm working per uh, card three. Dennis, please um, make sure that your hacker camera is uh, in correct position and is on. The little one, yes. All right, uh, send the resets and EMMI initialization or start uh, using the internal bus. Okay. And I'm switch manual? No. We would like to be in the auto mode, right? Correct. So please put the switch into the manual uh, mode. It's in the manual mode. Okay. And I'm getting to step two. And please confirm that the LED for manual control is illuminated. Yes, I confirm. And I'm switching to step two. E EMMI will be using the uh, middle monitor. Copy. EMMI is it on the middle monitor, and I'm scrolling to the right, performing step three. All correct. I'm done with step three, and I EMMI reset is on the left screen. I confirm. Copy. I'm scrolling to reset uh, on uh, screen number three, or monitor number three. Also, Oleg, just FYI, we are uh, get, you're entering eclipse in one minute, so please don't forget to. It will be orbital night. Uh, please don't forget to turn on your uh, lights. Definitely, they're on. Okay. So our assess is in middle position, and I'm putting it on the left uh, screen, uh, scrolling over there. Affirmative. And the switch is um, on the right. Correct. And our set is reset is is it blinking? Is the LED blinking? Yes, the LED is blinking. And I'm pressing start. 
And that's going to be for step nine. And I'm done with step nine. Uh, nothing is illuminated anymore. Or we just see the power LED. And all right, um, Oleg. It's looking good. Please press on. I'm going to the configuration menu. Stop. And I'm pressing stop. Yes. Correct. Yes. And I can select the language. Start. I'm pressing start. Yes, start. Start is confirmed, and I see that the configuration for bus 1553 is available. That's a me the menu, and I'm pressing stop from the table. Stop. Done. ID. It's asking me for ID. I'm pressing start for step 17. All correct, Oleg. All right, start has been pressed. I see the update menu for EMMI, and I'm pressing start. All correct. Press start. Denis, you first need to remove the covers. And I checked if it's correct or not. Oleg, please continue. We're standing by for the end of the checkouts, and I confirm that all um, indicators lit up and then went out. And I'm selecting display parameters. And I'm selecting English. And on the menu, CPC English, and then on the um, checkout menu, it's uh, asking me to press um, start. That's correct. Select start. And now it's asking me to press stop. Oleg, are the LEDs illuminated? Yes, they are. Era shows three green ones. Grapple and grapple uh, is in green. And it's also suggesting that I can press stop. Okay, uh, Oleg, you can press stop. It's asking me if I should press, uh, it's suggesting that I press emergency. Press. In work. Command sent. And then it's telling me release emergency and suggest to go back to the um, original configuration. Go ahead, done. Uh, the LED um, is illuminated and no longer illuminated. And I see the video and caution messages. Uh, 
At the uh, two hour, nine minute mark into uh, today's spacewalk, Oleg Artemiev and Denise Matveyev reporting that uh, the European Robotic Arm Control Panel has checked out in normal fashion. Uh, you can see a good view of that uh, control box that has been affixed uh, to the Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory module. The uh, two cosmonauts are just uh, completing uh, a few final diagnostic checks of the box that will uh, ultimately be used to route commanding from either the Russian mission controllers uh, outside of Moscow or from cosmonauts inside uh, the Russian segment of the station to move the uh, European robotic arm to and from various uh, grapple points on the outside of the multipurpose laboratory module in support of payload and uh, people moving capability. Oleg, you should have a message on um, SPSS Red in in the error mode. Come again. I told you. Okay. What you what you see is correct. Just uh, check what's in the mode uh, error mode. Yes, we are in the error mode. And, Oleg, please check what you see in the uh, error mode. Stand by. Manual. There is a star SB, SB, Opeger. That is correct, Oleg. Uh, this is what we want to see. Stand by. With the uh, European robotic arm control box uh, having checked out uh, in nominal fashion, the uh, two cosmonauts are going to be uh, setting uh, a variety of buttons on that uh, device to uh, place the control box in what is called stowage mode. They'll then close uh, thermal insulation over the box before the next uh, spacewalk that is planned for April 28th. Next up for the cosmonauts, once they complete this work, we have uh, will be uh, uh, the Alfonso. start of the installation of three handrails on uh, the robotic arm itself. There will be a number of handrails uh, that will be installed uh, to facilitate uh, spacewalkers in the future uh, moving uh, about uh, the robotic arm itself and uh, to temporarily house uh, some payload equipment that will be used uh, for the uh, robotic arm to uh, move payloads around uh, the Russian segment of the International Space Station. Oleg? Yes. Gennady, this is Gennady. 
заморозить начал, может быть, что-нибудь... А, Геннадий, по whatever reason, my um, hot cold settings are pretty cold. I was just thinking maybe we can make it a little bit warmer in my suit. Well, if you are taking a break and if you are um, in orbital night, then you can try and put the switch for um, the um, heat exchanger to um, the warm position. It's going to increase the temperature by about a couple of degrees, but if you are pretty chilly, you can uh, turn off the pump temporarily and then turn it back on. Okay, the pump. All right, uh, the pump is off. Copy. And the hot, hot cold switch. Put it in the hot position. Yes, it's going to be a little bit warmer. Right. But to be honest, it started getting pretty chilly even when we were in insulation. That This happens, but it's all in our hands. We can even turn off the uh, pump. Okay. All right. Dennis, how are you? Oh, I'm happy. And comfy, neither hot nor cold. That's good. That is good. Dennis, how are you? Are you tired? Just a little bit. But it's no surprise. Oh, you can take a break. All right, taking a break. Are we sticking to our timeline, Sergey? You are absolutely like on time per the timeline. That report uh, from uh, the crew and the Russian flight control team in Karolyov outside of Moscow at the two-hour, 18-minute mark in uh, today's spacewalk, the International Space Station flying to the south of Australia from southwest to northeast. And once you recover... The uh, European Robotic Arm Control Panel Box has been successfully installed and checked out. The uh, two cosmonauts will be moving uh, on to the next series of tasks, which is the installation of three handrails on the arm itself. The European Robotic Arm is 37 feet long. It is essentially folded in place on the side of the Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory Module in an inverted V if you will, if you saw it, on the side of uh, the module itself. On the next spacewalk, on April 28th, the uh, protective covers uh, on various points of uh, the arm itself will be removed, launch locks will be released, and the arm will be commanded to make its first tentative motion away from its uh, grapple fixtures 
It has two end effectors on either end of the arm, very much like the Canadarm2 robotic arm does. The Canadarm2, along with the Japanese robotic arm, service robotic tasks on the U.S. segment of the International Space Station, but cannot reach as far as the Russian segment. Hence, uh, the need for yet another robotic arm, this one uh, provided by the European Space Agency. All right. Once um, our IDA is done with his steps, you will have just uh, a little bit left. Get ready. We are going to uh, put uh, the EMMI in the um, storage mode or stowed mode. Get ready. Oleg, what do you see in the era status? Era status, two X, two X's, one zero. Come again. I see X X dash one dash dash zero. Do you see, Oleg, um, that there is mode no TM, uh, and then star no TM error mode, and then it, it's X X one zero. That's good. So the brightness switch. Uh, toggle it twice and then put uh, EMMI in the stowage mode. Copy. All right, the brightness has decreased. Should I do it one more time? Yes, please. Okay. The displays are. Off, and we only see the power on indicator. Copy, Oleg. Now we will um, get the confirmation, uh, and we'll be installing the protective cover. And, Oleg, you have a go to close the protective cover, close the lid. Copy. I'm closing it all. Okay. We have it closed. The cover. And the lid. So the lid is closed, the cover is closed, and we see that. And I have, all right, and then I can confirm that EMMI is in the stowage mode. Um, 
Oh, we got the Oleg. Right on the timeline, the uh, two okay, cosmonauts have now closed the cover to the uh, European robotic arm control panel box, placing it in its so-called stowage mode until the next time it is used. Now uh, they'll press on for the beginning of the work to install three handrails on the arm itself. to plane three, is that correct? Yes, towards plane three. All right, we have two reds left. And a cable that's attached with a wire tie. So, do you think it's enough um, to install that handrail on the ERAM just with one wire tie? Yes, one wire tie will be sufficient. Okay. Dennis, be careful with the cutter. I'm in no hurry. I'm very careful. What genius is, has tied it all up like this here? Dennis, I can see you. Now we see that you can see each other. Is it so? I am translating to 43. So, what handrail should I be looking for? 4336. Uh, so, is, which, which handrail do we need? It's 4336. And this is where I am. I've been traveling and traveling, and now here I am at 4336. So, now. You should open the MLI blanket where you have the um, support for handrail number four. So you want me to kind of open it up a little bit, right? I'm doing that. It's opposite handrail 4336. Okay. And we can see it, Oleg. I am opening it a little bit. Well, that's such a good Velcro here. There we go. This is the spot. It's um, number four. So completely free and empty and ready. Great. That's the um, location for the handrail. Uh, now, Oleg, once you are ready, retrieve the handrail, and that's where we want you to install it. And Dennis, I can see you again. I'm not opening it up um, completely because it's going to be pretty difficult to uh, close it later. Two hours, 28 minutes in the spacewalk. Uh, you're looking at uh, the first view of one of the two limbs of the 37-foot-long European robotic arm, which is folded in place as uh, Denise Matveyev uh, removes thermal covers in uh, advance of the installation of the first of three handrails on the two limbs of the arm. Yes, I did. That's good.
Так, поршень 4 встал. Okay, so I installed handrail number 4 on the lock. Great, Олег. Now, uh, put back with safety and uh, uh, retrieve number 6. So the locks are just locked by themselves automatically. Yes, there should be an indicator. The indicator should uh, uh, crop up. Yes, uh, I can see it. So everything is nominal. All right now, what uh, handrail is next? So, and what, uh, which one do you have? I have number one and six. Okay. All right. Uh, let's retrieve six. So are you going to secure it with a safety tether, or uh, are you installing Matveyev has now installed the first of three handrails on the European robotic arm. Two more to go for this particular spacewalk. Yes, I do. Here you go. It's a good one. Hold it for a while. Uh, no, go ahead and take it. It's uh, like a suitcase with a handle. Okay, so should I uh, show it Alec? So if the cover is holding, you don't have to uh, uh, put MLI over it, because during the next EVA we will work with it. So again, the indicators should be visible on the lock, and the handrail should be installed uh, tightly. You know, the locks are locked, but the indicators are not visible. No, look carefully. No, the indicators are not uh, visible here, so I guess you will have to hold it now. So let us take turns in holding it. Okay, so there is the uh, line here. Would you take uh, pictures of uh, each handrail with the indicators? Yes, yeah, I will do that. You know, there is a space for handrail number five. We did not take it with us. Well, it's not time to install it yet. So in a minute and a half, uh, you will have sunrise, guys. Copy. All right, take a picture of handrails. Go ahead. You know, Alec, the specialists are telling me that the indicators uh, indicator should be in the sun position, like Dennis had. You know, I didn't have it on the left one, but on the right uh, it is visible. So should I press it down? You know, Alec, actually the indicator should be in the sunk position, uh, in the press down position. So well, then what should I do with mine? Well, as far as uh, we can see, uh, the marks are aligned. 
You know, they are aligned on one side, but not aligned on the other. Uh, have a look. So they are aligned, the match, and here they are not. Maybe it's uh, just the handrail itself. Maybe the uh, area for it is not suitable. Alia, could you please retrieve the wretched range and uh, uh, just try to use it uh, on uh, the indicator that you carefully just knock on it. Okay. Dennis, and your indicators are in the sunk position. Yes, all four of them. Okay, so Dennis, your handrails are installed nominally then. So, Dennis, you have a go to uh, the area of the era elbow and start working there. You know, this is, I look, I think that uh, the mounting plate is not even here, because on the right, uh, the matches are, uh, the marks are aligned and the lock is sunk, but on the left, you know, uh, there is the um, misalignment here. That's why the handrail uh, was not uh, correctly installed. But I am taking video right now, so you will see, hopefully. By the way, can you see it uh, via the cameras? You, you mean number four? Yes, number four. I guess, you know, the seating uh, was missed for that one. Bobby Alec. All right, so let's complete handrail activities. Uh, retrieve the wretched wrench and translate uh, to the uh, era elbow joint. Uh, you will remove the cover. Yes, I can see on handrail number six that the marks, that the lines are matching on both ends. And on mine, uh, they are not matching on one end. But you have taken pictures of everything. Yes, that's correct. So I'm re re retrieving. I am uh, correction. I'm putting back the wretched trench. All right, Alec, let's not waste our time. Uh, we will analyze the pictures. And uh, this locking wire, you know, is not visible for you yet. You cannot see it. No, we can see it, but uh, not in detail, unfortunately. Yeah. All right. I will uh, uh, can actually do a close up for you. Can you see it now? Yes, we can see it that the uh, that it is sticking out. And again, on this bracket, the lines are aligned, and on that uh, are not. Yes, I can see that the bracket is uh, the culprit. Actually, the mounting plate is culprit. So maybe it should be on to the left, more to the left. I copy all. Uh, let's uh, complete this activity with the handrail. And translate to the elbow joint uh, to start the removal of the cover uh, from the joint. All right, in work. Let me close uh, it with the MLI first. Олег, but in your opinion, it is installed tightly, right, the handrail? Yes, uh, it is very tight. I did a pull test, and I knocked on it, and it looks like it is stable. I guess I should deactivate the camera, right, Moscow, so that uh, I can save some battery juice. Yes, Alec, that's right, and please translate to the elbow joint uh, location. 
Okay, the camera. Okay, what about the cover? Uh, are there any issues? Okay, there are ties there that need uh, to be cut. Okay, Dennis, uh, could you please secure uh, the cover to the big uh, red hook? I will do that, but it is actually quite tight here. All right, and uh, unintelligible. Yeah, when you uh, put back the cutter, yes, I am uh, putting back the cutter. This is Mission Control Houston, two hours, 41 minutes into the uh, spacewalk. Just to recap, uh, the... The cover. First spacewalk of Expedition 67, the fourth of the year out of the International Space Station. The fourth for Oleg Artemiev and the first for Denis Matveyev got underway at 10 a.m. Central Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Cover. The two cosmonauts working uh, very efficiently outside of the Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory module installed and successfully checked out the European Robotic Arm Control Panel box. It's uh, up and running in good shape for future commanding of the uh, robotic arm in the tasks uh, that we'll undertake in the months and years ahead uh, to move people and payloads around the Russian segment of the International Space Station. The uh, first of two of three handrails today have been installed on the arm itself, the second in the process of being installed by Artemiev and Matveyev. Medvedev also in the process of removing protective uh, thermal covers from uh, launch uh, base points and payload interfaces. Soon we'll be removing a thermal cover from the elbow of the robotic arm itself. The next spacewalk these two will uh, conduct is just 10 days away on April 28th when they will also uh, release launch uh, locks and other constraints uh, that held the arm securely in place during its launch. Uh, from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan last July, affixed to the Naoka module so that it can take its first tentative steps away from its uh, grapple points. There are two limbs to this arm. Once unfurled, uh, can reach uh, 37 feet in distance with a pair of uh, end effectors, just like the Canadarm2 robotic arm that services the U.S. segment of the International Space Station. Okay, do you have a tie there? Yes, I do. And there is a handrail on the ear arm that you can use. Okay, first I will try to untie uh, this ribbon. Alec, don't waste your time, cut it. Unintelligible. But I will first try to untie it. Yes, actually, I succeeded. I untied it. Okay, you know, the, the uh, guy who tied it uh, was a very uh, conscientious guy and industrious. All right, so please, again, be careful with the reflectors. Now I can see the first wire tie here, okay? Fold uh, the MLI cover in such a way so that uh, it will be convenient for you to put it back later on. Well, uh, so maybe we should bag it. All right, so, you know, uh, do it in such a way that it is convenient for you to tie and untie it. All right, I will have to rehook my tether here. Stand by one. And what handrail should I use? Uh, is it a 4351 handrail? Uh, okay, it's 36. 
All right. Okay, so uh, have you completed your MLI activity? Uh, I'm asking Alek. I'm asking Denis. Uh, so Alek, so what about the cover? The cover is secured. This is Denis. Uh, I'm not uh, done yet. We are doing it uh, simultaneously with Alek. Alek, there is some kind of a thread uh, there, so please make sure that it is not uh, just moving about there. All right, uh, we will do that right now. Don't worry. Here you go. Everything is ready. All right, I will rehook my tether towards the handrail where I will be working. Right, so we are rotating it here and turning it and rotating it, folding it up. So what is the best way to fold it? Another tie uh, here that I discovered. And a good view from a camcorder that's mounted in a window in the Zvezda service module. Uh, at the bottom of your screen, Denise Madveyev, Oleg Artemiev at the top of your screen as they continue to remove thermal covers from uh, the European robotic arm and its two limbs. They're installing a, a trio of handrails on the arm after the uh, completion of the work uh, to install a control panel for the operation of the arm, that went uh, by the book Absolutely. as we are closing in on the three-hour mark in today's spacewalk. You know, uh, for Denise, maybe it is uh, oh, dangerous. For me, it is not. It is in the schist now. Now, I look unintelligible. All right. Okay, you know he has some kind of uh, MLI cover beneath there as well. So below there we have another cover. No, actually you should not remove anything below. Only, uh, you know, the one that you have already folded. But I just uh, want to tell you that uh, there is another cover below. Yes, this actually is um, a suit uh, to the hull. Well, it is tied. Alec, do not cut anything else. Yes, uh, that's important. I know, and I don't know anything without, I don't do anything without your command, Moscow. All right. Let me move away from these reflectors here. Denis, have you completed your side of the cover? Folding. Yes, I have. Now, could you please take a, a camera and uh, take picture of the sun reflectors in the area of the elbow joint. And I'm moving away uh, from those reflectors. This is EV1. All right, I am activating the pump, of course, now I'm uh, on the hot side, kind of. Alec, 
решать. А, даже, я думаю, использовать несколько проволочных фиксаторов. And, Олег, I'm giving you advice to use a few wire ties uh, to tie that up. Exactly, uh, I'm doing this right now. Олег, another suggestion for you? Uh, yeah, after you have secured the cover, could you please uh, translate to handrail number four and uh, uh, see, uh, look at the brackets and uh, try to do a pull test, maybe, you know, during the installation, uh, it uh, got heated and uh, please check whether it is still installed tightly. Uh, of course, after you are complete uh, with the cover removal and folding up. Well, I can do it uh, you know, both at the same time. All right, it's up to you, Alex. A good view of the uh, two limbs of the European robotic arm, flanked uh, by Denise Matveyev on the bottom of your screen and Oleg Artemiev at the top, as they continue to remove uh, thermal covers you can take a breather. and uh, install handrails on the arm itself to facilitate its uh, future use by spacewalkers uh, in the conduct of payload and people moving activities. And uh, an excellent view of the arm itself. At the very top of the arm is the elbow. Uh, that thermal cover will also be removed. On the next spacewalk on April 28th, Artemiev and Matveyev will be releasing a number of launch constraints and restraints, launch locks, if you will, that have held the arm securely in place since it launched uh, on the Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory module uh, last July. Two of the three handrails scheduled for installation today uh, have, in fact, been installed. One more to go. Alec, you know, the kit looks uh, tight as it is. Alec, don't fold. Uh, the kid We're just a few minutes shy of the three-hour mark in uh, today's spacewalk. A great view of the Earth below, 261 miles below, as the International Space Station approaches uh, British Columbia and uh, the West Coast, just north of Vancouver. Can you please tell me whether I live can reach handrail number one uh, from where he is right now? Unintelligible. Let me see.
Скажи, пожалуйста, еще раз. Дотягивается, дотягивается Олег со своей стороны до товарища номер один? Денис, again, will Олег be able to reach 200 number one from where he is? Yes, he will. And Олег, we have a suggestion. We will ask Denise to take some pictures and uh, you will install on your side, uh, you will install handrail number one. All right, we'll do that. Okay, so what should you install? That handrail, yes. And now, as for the handrail number four, could you please knock uh, with a, a wretched wrench on the plate, on the mountain plate? Right? All right, I will do that. And what about the timeline, where we are? Uh, we, you are moving exactly per the timeline, on time. The report uh, from the Russian flight control team informing the two cosmonauts, they're right on the timeline. They uh, began uh, the spacewalk a few minutes behind schedule, but uh, have made up time and uh, are working quite efficiently outside of the Russian segment of the International Space Station, approaching the three-hour mark in today's spacewalk. And I will give you instructions. So you will have to translate towards Handrail 4306 towards the MLM cone uh, in the direction of Peho. I can see uh, the handrail 4309, and uh, this is Oleg. So, uh, do you think one YSI will be sufficient? Denis, so please translate towards Peho, uh, towards MLM cone. All right. Will do. And once you reach the handrail 4300, uh, you will report it to us. Now, Alec, regarding the wire ties, uh, so do you have two wire ties? Let us try two. Well, actually, I can use all 15 that I have here. Alec, no, 15 is not necessary, just two will suffice. All right. Uh, and uh, the plates, they are detaching uh, gradually. Okay. Okay. You know, I think the two wire ties will be quite sufficient. All right. And also I see the uh, red tether on the camera, uh, and uh, so. yes, I guess it got tangled up uh, somewhere. It's uh, okay now. And uh, let me uh, wrap another wire tie. So what should I pick? What wire tie should I go with? Uh, let's uh, pick this one. Uh, Oleg, don't do too much work at this point because you're in EVA 53, you're going to have to unwrap it all. Okay. Uh, would it be sufficient like this? Uh, yes, I like uh, that. Will do. Okay, should I uh, tap again? I don't think it's going to work, but I can uh, give it a try. Oleg? Yes, go ahead. 
Поправь там по возможности крагу на правой перчатке. Олег, uh, if possible, please, please adjust the gauntlet of your uh, right glove. Вверх ее как бы закрыть. Try to uh, pull it up uh, to cover the connector. Uh -huh. Спасибо. Okay, thanks. Okay, it's covered now. Thanks. Uh, Sergey, uh, this is Denise. Uh, I'm at the handrail of 4300 copy all. And uh, Oleg, uh, 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 go ahead and uh, uh, open up the uh, handrail, uh, tap uh, on the bracket using the wrench, and also you should translate uh, to handrail zero, uh, 4004. Uh, which is closer to the PHO. Uh, go ahead and uh, translate down uh, to uh, 424 first and then slightly to the right. Your uh, work site is the uh, area of the uh, antenna uh, to the say, and uh, your task there is uh, to take photographs uh, of this uh, antenna. Uh, Oleg, uh, uh, please uh, tap at the base uh, from the inside, uh, on the inside of the handrail, uh, in that uh, uh, area where the indicator wouldn't fit. Yes, I found it. So did it uh, pop out? Did it come out? Well, uh, yes, uh, but the uh, handrail uh, came out uh, of it. Uh, so, so could you please remove the MLI uh, flap? Uh, no, this is not what I'm trying to show. So this is, this is the uh, handrail. Uh, it uh, came out, uh, as you can see, uh, from... from a point where it was uh, secured. As you can see, there is a line here, and that's where it uh, came out from. So, Oleg, could you please uh, photograph this uh, handrail? Okay. All right, I'll take photos now. Let's see. So if I understand it correctly, uh, the handrail uh, came out of the station. Yes, uh, by about four millimeters. Just uh, uh, exactly uh, that same uh, clearance that uh, um, we saw earlier that uh, we lacked. Okay, Oleg, I see it now, and you can continue. Good view of uh, the European Space Agency's latest contribution to the International Space Station, its uh, long-awaited European robotic arm that is attached to the Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory Module. As you uh, are looking up almost to the top of Naoka toward the uh, Prishal node module uh, and attached to it, uh, docked to it, if you will, Soyuz MS-21 that delivered uh, Artemiev, Matveyev, and Sergei Korsakov to the station a month ago. Uh, Sergei, uh, are you getting any uh, picture through the camera? Yes, uh, I am. And I know what you're talking about. I can see it in the camera. And uh, what about the handrail? Is it installed reliably? Uh, yes, uh, and uh, uh, it was installed reliably before, uh, but now uh, it fits. 
fit. So it's fine now. So the handrail uh, came out from the station uh, just by uh, the same um, clearance that uh, we saw that didn't match. Uh, okay, so Oleg, can you confirm that uh, it is installed uh, reliably? Yes, uh, confirm. And of course, uh, you always need uh, the confirmation just in case. Okay, I'm taking a break. Oleg, Dennis, uh, uh, we're back from LRS. Okay. Uh, we're taking a break now, a quick break. All right, go ahead and take a break. Uh, Dennis, uh, look, uh, the MLM is underneath uh, your uh, right uh, hand, so please make sure that you do not touch anything in that area. Uh, Denise, can you confirm that you see the antenna? Uh, no, I see many antennas. This is all. Let me help you, uh, Denise. Uh, please, please wait for me. I'll uh, get over there. If possible, could you please tell me where it should be oriented? It should be oriented towards the uh, Pehawa. Uh, Denise, uh, please turn to the right uh, to make sure that uh, we can see you as well. This is the antenna on the MLM. Okay. Uh, now up. Denise, uh, uh, Denise, did you uh, photograph the reflectors, or uh, so I don't have to do that right now? Okay, okay, good. Oleg, and uh, uh, once you're done with your break, uh, please tr uh, translate towards the uh, handrail one. In, in Audible. Dennis, please turn to the right. Так. And uh, uh, please turn your head up now. You should be looking right at it. Basically, it's a big round dish. Okay, copy that. Okay, let me try that. So, trackers should be on your right. So make sure that you don't uh, touch them as well. Copy. Denise. Would it be possible to turn your head in such a way that we can see what you're doing too, to make sure that we're looking at the same antenna? Okay, I will try that now. Ну, в принципе, если ты ее 
Денис, it should be to your right on the MLM. There it is, there it is. You're looking right at it now. Is it this one? The camera was turned towards it. It's not this one, it's the one to the left and more to the left. It's uh, next to your left hand. This is the, the antenna that you're supposed to photograph. Yes, I uh, did take photographs of this antenna from uh, this um, angle specifically. And while Oleg is installing the handrails, uh, please uh, take detailed photographs from different angles as well as the general view. Okay, copy that. Because if you do this now, uh, it's going to make uh, EVA 55 much easier for you. Uh, uh, Denise. Uh, you are still working in this area or where there are some cable connections and make sure that uh, you don't touch them. Okay, I am um, doing my best. Dennis, uh, all is going great. Uh, you uh, did take the uh, right photograph. Uh, uh, and let's go ahead and start translating towards uh, the handrail uh, 4005, towards the uh, SL transition uh, ring on the transition ring. And uh, you'll wait for Oleg uh, there. Also, uh, I wanted to tell you that hand, uh, handrail uh, 4005 uh, is named uh, after uh, Piotr Dubrov. Copy that. Did he break it or something? We were able to install this handrail on the second attempt during the second EVA only. And uh, uh, Peter did all he could, all in his power, to install this handrail because it was not an easy job. Uh, so, and uh, the same for handrail 4 on ERA uh, uh, arm. It will be named after Oleg Artem Artemyev. Well, I see the exact same handrail, uh, I, I think, here again, the exact same situation. Uh, so should I uh, tap on it? Uh, yes, uh, go ahead. Okay, well, it is installed uh, securely, reliably. Uh, Denise, uh, Please beware of the cables, okay? Denis, I didn't copy. Please repeat your last. Yes, I was saying that I uh, am uh, careful. So 4005, yes. 4005. Now, please translate towards handrail 4006. Uh, okay, so uh, I did a couple of taps, uh, and uh, I uh, can only see that it came out by approximately 0.5 millimeters. Excellent, Oleg. So the, mar the marks, they're, they're like halfway there, so not fully there. What about the indicator? Is it uh, all the way in? Uh, yes, uh, on both sides. And uh, 
I can uh, make a video if you'd like. Uh, I'll just uh, photograph uh, everything. Okay. This is Mission Control Houston, three hours, 19 minutes into today's spacewalk. Oleg Artemiev and Denise Matveyev continue uh, to work on uh, the installation of a third handrail on the European robotic arm and to take pictures of uh, various points on the arm for documentation in advance of their next spacewalk on April 28th to continue the outfitting of the arm and the release of launch constraints and launch locks. Uh, that will enable the arm to uh, flex its muscles for the first time uh, since it was launched on the uh, Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory module last July. The camera is off. Copy, Oleg. And I uh, checked that it is off. I'm moving towards Denis now. Oleg, they need a reminder on the translation path. Uh, so once you start moving, uh, you're basically translating towards the uh, PHO uh, copy. So I'm going towards Denise. Oleg, could you check if uh, Erka uh, LED is on? Uh, it's um, very bright here, so I can't really see. So is it not working? So, do you think it's working so uh, how long have you started suspecting that it wasn't working for for a while but we didn't want to distract you with that well you should have uh Dennis was next to me and I could have forward cycled it uh, so 
you will translate uh, towards Denise, and then you can check it again. Uh, I can see it now. What do you see? Denise, you can see your leg, correct? Denise, uh, can you check uh, all the cameras that would be? I do not see you. You should have uh, translated towards the uh, SCU uh, using the circular handrail for zero zero five. Well, I did not expect to see you there. Look at this sensor. Stand by. Is it this handrail? Four zero zero five. Four zero zero five. Uh, yes. So was that yeah, correct. So should I uh, remove it? No, please do not do this. This is the handrail that's named after Petro Dubrov, and uh, you're supposed to be moving along uh, plane four for this to. This is uh, where we're we're going. And also, could you uh, please check the LED? Uh, Check what? The camera's LED. Uh, careful here. Uh, do make sure that you do not uh, uh, cut anything. Please be careful. Do you see this uh, sharp uh, corner here? Okay, so let's move away from the antenna and then you can uh, check uh, everything. I don't think that uh, I can get through. Here, please, please wait, stop, wait. Well, let me uh, get through first. Okay, so go ahead and uh, hand it to me. Slowly. So how are you doing? Did you get stuck? No, I'm uh, getting through now. It's so heavy. Okay, uh, go ahead and move away from the antenna. So can you check if uh, my LED is uh, illuminated or not? So one is on and two more are on. So this is the light here, one is on. Yeah. 
Because this one is on. I um, switched the cameras. Is it working now? Uh, I think uh, one of your LEDs is not illuminated. Could you please turn? This is the one uh, work light, the U.S. light. Uh, yes, uh, I uh, kept it uh, here. Okay, so there it is. So regarding the work site for the upcoming EVAs, would it be possible? Uh, would it be possible uh, to reach the uh, SM uh, weight seven uh, from MLM? Okay, place seven. Stand by. Uh, there it is. Yes, I can see it now. There it is. One, two, three, four. So, are we supposed to uh, work in that area? Uh, yes, uh, this uh, will be in the future. Uh, we'll be doing some work there. And so what about the antenna? Uh, it's uh, fine. I don't really see any uh, obstacles. So, yes, uh, we can reach it. No, no problem. Or uh, we can go from the uh, handrail named after Peter Dubrov. Okay, Oleg, uh, you can take a break now since you just finished uh, translating along this path. And also, uh, can you film um, now? Well, you should have told me earlier. I can uh, film Denise uh, only. So, uh, Denise, please move back uh, actually towards your feet. Uh, yes, move over there, and uh, I'll start taking pictures now. So we're not getting any pictures now, so I, I can't really uh, give you any recommendations. I guess that will work. It's not an activity. It's not a task. It's just taking pictures. All right, and there you go. As if you just got here, and you are at um, plate seven. And from the side of the handrail of Pyotr Dubrov, you have arrived and you are working. And try and make like a general overview of the whole setup. And here is the general view. And here is what we came from. And that's the whole translation path. How are you? Are you guys tired? Uh, EV2? I'm okay. That's good to hear. Oleg, thank you so much. We just uh, wanted to say a big thank you because it's going to be very um, beneficial for later EVAs.
Так, на камере еще четыре квадратика. And on the camera we still have four bars. So we've used up only one third. That is a plenty OLED. All you need to do is to take pictures of the adapter. And then you will be moving, going back home with no rush, just taking pictures and, uh, and imagery. Uh, you will be in orbital night in three and a half minutes, so please turn on your lights. Copy. Okay. And here's the French hook. There we go. Unintelligible. This is Mission Control Houston, three hours, 34 minutes into today's spacewalk. Oleg Artemiev and uh, Denise Matveyev uh, continue to work uh, diligently and efficiently along the timeline, having installed three handrails now on the European robotic arm, having removed thermal insulation from the elbow of the arm, and all is going well as uh, the crew is working uh, per the timeline. Meanwhile, up on board the International Space Station, we're just a few minutes away from the daily planning conference as uh, the remainder of the uh, International Space Station crew nears the end of its workday. So we are passing by one rather necessary antenna. The one that's rotating. Copy. And we got to the ring. And 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 we're translating to the ring. And Oleg, just a reminder, please make sure you do not touch that antenna with your left hand. Okay, so I can't touch it with my left hand? Well, neither left nor right, just don't touch it. All right, I won't. Okay, I'm at the ring. And here is the French hook. Okay, stand by for a second. Let me get myself secured here. Give me your French hook. Wonderful. I got it. Let me 
secure it here. Stand by. Don't unhook yourself. No, I'm I'm staying where I am. All right, I have it secured to here and then there. Yeah, we got too many cloths here. Stand by. Okay. And it's on here, right? Unintelligible, I on too. Stand by. Maybe you need to take a break. Well, if you say so. Yeah, take a five minute break. All right. We're freeing up the ring, and that's where we take the break. And the French hook should be connected to the ring, right? Yes. You need to secure the French hook to the ring. Okay. Or transportation ring. All right. Let's take a ride. In Huntsville, Munich, Suba, Moscow, Expedition 67, USOS is ready for the evening DPC. Good evening, Expedition 67. It has been a great pleasure for me to work with you on Orbit 2 uh, here in Houston. We have uh, four topics from Houston this evening. Uh, the first one is for Larry. We would like to uh, give you a heads up that we will be conducting a Dragon Centerline uh, camera checkout. Uh, the camera is not pointing inside the Dragon, but I uh, just wanted to give you a heads up. Larry copies with a thumbs up. Okay, another one is for Larry and also for the entire crew. For your awareness, SpaceX will be conducting thruster firing test at around 0600 GMT for uh, 10 minutes. Of course, that's on the uh, Endeavor. And uh, so you will hear some thrust of firing tomorrow morning for about 10 minutes in Dragon. Yeah, 0600, and we'll hear some uh, thruster firing from Endeavor. That's a good read back. And the uh, third topic is for Kayla. You asked us about the uh, autoscope specula. Um, we have no more new specula on board until MG18, so there's no action required for you at this time. Roger, thanks. Okay, and the last is uh, for everybody. Um, as for the um, Axiom 1 Endeavour undock tomorrow, 1430 GMT undock is no-go due to weather. 
And we are looking at the 0 to 100 GMT on dock to see if weather improves to support landing. And uh, more details you will see on the timeline when you wake up tomorrow. Copy that. 1430 uh, tomorrow is no go and 0 200 uh, still to be determined whether that's good or not. Appreciate the heads up. Okay, uh, we'll keep our uh, fingers crossed. Huntsville, Munich, and Scuba have no topics. Uh, this And as uh, the Russian uh, spacewalk continues, you heard the call from uh, spacecraft communicator Koichi Wakata here in Mission Control up to the crew on board the International Space Station, all crew members, that uh, a weather briefing was conducted uh, a short time ago uh, between SpaceX, Axiom, NASA, all interested parties, unfavorable weather uh, at the uh, splashdown sites off the coast of Florida have resulted in a postponement of the undocking of the Axiom-1 crew. It had been scheduled for 9.35 a.m. Central Time, 10.35 a.m. Eastern Time on Tuesday morning. Instead, uh, the crew will receive a new timeline for their activities on Tuesday with pending weather, an undocking opportunity at approximately 9 p.m. Central Time, 10 p.m. Eastern Time, Tuesday night. That would result in a splashdown shortly after uh, 2 p.m. Central Time, 3 p.m. Eastern Time on Wednesday, April 20th. Another weather briefing is planned uh, for mid-morning on Tuesday to determine whether or not uh, the new undocking opportunity will be favorable or not, as uh, SpaceX continues to evaluate weather conditions at the splashdown sites that are available. So again, the Axiom-1 undocking has been postponed from Tuesday morning to no earlier than Tuesday night, pending another weather briefing in the morning to determine whether or not uh, the weather at the splashdown zones can support a return to Earth for the Axiom-1 crew on Wednesday. Working. Meanwhile, we're three hours and 44 minutes into today's spacewalk. Handrails have now been installed on uh, the European robotic arm that has been the focus of attention for Oleg Artemyev and Denis Matveyev throughout the day today. All of that work has gone uh, by the book, including the removal of thermal covers uh, from uh, the elbow of the 37-foot-long arm that it remains folded against uh, the Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory module. Also, uh, thermal covers uh, were removed from uh, base points, as they're called. These are the points to which uh, the arm can ultimately uh, maneuver around and grapple to on uh, the Multipurpose Laboratory module once full activation is completed of the arm. A uh, control panel box called the uh, European Robotic Arm Spacewalk Control Panel, was installed and activated and checked out thoroughly uh, with the uh, Russian flight controllers of the Russian Mission Control Center outside of Moscow as uh, work continues in the early stages of the activation and operation of the arm, which will continue over the course of the next several spacewalks. If you get a chance, you can start taking off the covers. It would be much uh, more convenient than if we went 
underneath a Estrella boom. Do you want to go in? No, I can actually reach it. Yeah, it's bright and nice and cozy in there. All right, crew lock bag, we're leaving it behind. Yes, you leave the um, kit with the covers there. And you are standing by. Seems like it's a full moon today. Can you please push my feet up? You mean, like, push you? Yes. Give me a push so that I could get in there. I, you do want to get in there, right? Yes, because I wanted to um, secure a few items in there, too. So, do you want to get the PDM? Uh, well, yeah, and I would like to get a little bit um, further so that I could secure the crew lock bag. Okay. And I got it, and where do you want to put it? Well, I have a tether. Let me give you the crew lock bag. Hold on, let me secure the trash bag first. Dennis, so when you're going to be taking the trash bag off, please don't forget to secure it, of course. Mm, but it doesn't want to, to be untethered. So, could you secure the French hook here, the safety one? Do you have it secured? Yes. Please stand by one. All right. Let I, let, I'll give you a hand, and then you will. So what do you have? The trash bag. Okay, I can see it. And there, let's put it here. There. And you can secure it there. You can sign up. Hook it up there like a garland.
This is Mission Control Houston. We're closing in on the four hour mark in today's spacewalk. Denise Matveyev in the field of view, along with Oleg Artemiev, are stowing uh, okay. items uh, that uh, no longer are needed for today's uh, remaining spacewalk tasks. They have completed everything so far that was uh, scheduled uh, on their workload. The uh, installation and connection of a European robotic arm control panel box. Just tangled up. The removal of protective covers from payload interfaces and uh, base points, right. which uh, the arm will use uh, to affix itself to various points along the multipurpose laboratory module in the future. The uh, two cosmonauts installed three handrails, removed uh, thermal cover, from the elbow area of the European robotic arm and are soon uh, to install a portable workstation adapter on a payload interface uh, on uh, the uh, multi-purpose laboratory module near the arm, which uh, will be used uh, to house uh, payloads as they are being staged to various points uh, to be affixed on uh, the Naoka module for payload data gathering in the future. This one. Mm -hmm. Got wrapped around you. Are you unwrapping it? It's a small rat there. How is it working? Okay. Great. And where are you going to put it? Where do you want to put it? <laughs> I couldn't figure out what you were going to do with it. Do you need any help? Where is the pet I am? The pet I am is behind me, behind you. Can you secure it with a short safety tether? Okay. There you go. Oleg, do you have the crew lock bag secured? Yes. But we need to push it a little bit uh, further in. Yes, and please make sure that um, it's secured. Where is the PRM? And actually, uh, grab all those cloths and like stick them underneath the rubber bands so that they're not floating all over. Okay. There, look. Really nice and tight bungees, and we can uh, push everything underneath them. Oleg, Dennis, you have plenty of time, so take your time. Uh, placing all the um, kits that you brought in in such a way so that it's convenient for you to um, get back in.
There you go. Looking great. And I'm going to take a break. Okay, sounds good. And Dennis, take a break and make sure that the French hooks are secured and the covers, the trash bag and the crew lock bag are all secured. With, um, yes, they are. Great. Now you can definitely take a break. You did work a lot. So the PRM portable workstation adapter is behind you, Dennis. You are passing me one hook, and I'm shifting it to the left. This is EV1. Towards the boom. And uh, now I'm ready to receive the second one from you. Sounds good. Stand by, stand by. Yes, I'm standing by. Stand by one. I will move closer. Yes, go ahead. So give me one hook. Yes, I am ready to receive it. Okay. Now uh, I'll move it here. Alex, Denise. So the EVA duration is uh, four hours up to now. Copy. So you are moving along very nicely, a little bit ahead. And so you have plenty of time to take a breather to have a rest. All right, you, they, they're telling us to take a breather. Well, it's not easy here. We did not use 
those? Well, but uh, the ones that we have are working nicely. Well, Denny somehow is said that that the current cameras are still working. Uh, he sounded sad about it. Well, actually, that was his most joyful voice that he uses. Okay, so one uh, hook is outside. Uh, yes, we give you a go to proceed, guys. This, that one is heavy thingy. All right, so we are moving it. You, we cannot uh, attach it to ourselves. Yes, it is a very heavy kit. You're right. You cannot attach it to yourself. Yourself. So please take turns in moving it and uh, monitor it closely. Okay, will you hold it? Uh, I will locate my uh, hook. Yes, I'm holding it. Now, Denise, please uh, egress slowly. All right. Okay, so you can rehook your tether so that the uh, tether is not on your way when you are egressing. And I can hold it in the meantime. Yes. You can use it, use the hook. To hold. Yes, I'm holding it. Now uh, you will need to rehook your tether. Okay. Right, so the kit is now outside uh, the hatch, the EVA hatch. So Dennis is egressing, and I am uh, holding the kit. Dennis, please look out. Uh, make sure that your tether is not in the way. Maybe to the left a little bit. Well, that's great. Thank <laughs> you. 
Guys, in a minute and a half, uh, there will be sunrise where you are. Copy, Moscow. Denise, how are things? Unintelligible. I am turning around. Do you need my help, Dennis? Now I'm looking for my short feather. The short one, no. unintelligible. This is Mission Control Houston, four hours, 11 minutes into uh, today's spacewalk. Oleg Artemiev and Denise Matveyev now working on the final planned task of today's spacewalk as they uh, take a uh, payload adapter installation mechanism out of uh, the Poisk airlock and will move it uh, to the area of the uh, European robotic arm on the uh, Naoka multipurpose laboratory module to install it. It will be used in the future for uh, payload activities and the staging of payloads that the robotic arm will move uh, back and forth uh, to various locations on Naoka for data gathering. The uh, crew has uh, completed all of the rest of the work for the day uh, with complete success. The installation and connection of the European robotic arm control panel on Naoka, the removal of protective covers from payload interfaces and base points to which uh, the robotic arm will affix itself for future operations. They've installed three handrails on the arm itself and removed a thermal cover from the elbow of the European arm. And so what's the matter? It's behind, below your right hand. No. All right. Okay, the kit. I'm holding it. Right, it 
it is uh, moving away. Uh, stand by. I will rehook my data. Yes, I'm holding it. So I rehooked one tether uh, towards the ring. Stand by one. I will receive uh, the kit from you. I am holding it now. Okay, I will rehook my tether as well. This is Dennis. So, do you need this second tether? Stand by one, Dennis. Unintelligible. Okay. Did you hook it up? Uh, stand by one. Yeah. Is something on the way? Yes. Uh, there is this uh, mobile ring uh, over your head. No, no. You you have to do it in the opposite direction. So you will both have a short LOS, guys, soon, and then we will, it, it will be an extended uh, video loss of signal. So you can proceed with the translation in the meantime. Go ahead, that is excellent. So the PRM adapter is on the translation ring already secured. And uh, Dennis's hook is on the ring as well. One uh, tether of Dennis. Guys, do you copy me? Yes, go ahead. So we might have a short LOS. Yes, we copied that. So please continue. So we are not receiving any video right now. So you can translate on Strela Boom. We are on the Strela Boom, and I'm disconnecting here from from the boom here and uh, let's roll oh stand by one is everything fine with you dennis yes 
I thought maybe you should move uh, a little bit towards me so that uh, you do not uh, touch antenna. The antenna is behind you, behind your back. If you turn a little bit towards the, the side, it will be great. Excellent. Okay, now let's roll. Guys, be careful. There is an antenna on the module. All right, let's roll. So we are uh, testing anchors here. We have arrived. All right, copy that and please secure the ring, the translation ring here in work. So where is the hook? It has a hook here. I cannot see it. Oh, here it is. The new one, the brand new. Right, we secured it. Now we are translating. Okay, this is number one. Now uh, let's do it with number two. I will move a little bit further, further. Now. Why is it uh, kind of free afloat here? So let us uh, make it uh, more stable. Okay. It should not move move about like that. Here you go. Now uh, it will be easier to uh, attach. Now, so let us work with the kit. Let me reach it. Right, I need uh, to untie it here first, stand by one. I am holding it and it is secured with one tether hook so you can try to untie it. So you are now in the location where the comm is unstable and please continue providing your reports. You might not hear me for about three minutes. All right, so we are rehooking the ram on the handrail of MLM. Copy.
And the same thing with the second one. Stand by. Okay, it is done. Now I have to untangle that one. Okay, let me do it. Oleg, all right, so let me rehook my trousers first. I move a little bit uh, away from you. So that we don't uh, have to be tethered to one handrail. Now I'm holding it. Now, uh, you can hook your tether there, stand by one. Oh, you mean to this location, on the handrail. Yes, you hold it and I rehook my tether. Yes, I'm holding it, Oleg. I will move away a little bit first. Now, the handrail is uh, on your left, a little bit uh, over your left hand. That one? Yes, that one. Now you hold it, Dennis. Okay. Oleg, Dennis, we had a short LOS. Uh, now we have recovered calm. Uh, yes, Moscow, go ahead. Well, it's good that we have recovered calm. So we are rehooking our tethers and we are uh, keeping an eye on the kit at all times. What about your uh, what about your fatigue? Are you fatigued? Uh, are you tired, guys? No. No, we even haven't started the real work, you know. Copy. Uh, let me hold it, Dennis. Uh, you rehook your tether, okay? Yes, uh, I'm holding it. Okay, sounds good. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So they're twisted somewhat. All right. Okay, so um, this uh, uh, will be turned backwards, uh, and uh, this is uh, going to be uh, turned uh, with the front uh, side facing us. So wait, hold on. Okay, I'm holding it. Is everything well? Uh, hanging there, just a little bit left. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we are uh, seeing you guys. Do you have it? Uh, yes, all right. So I will uh, move forward then. So the antenna is here, and uh, uh, we need to go around it. Uh, going around it. Uh, okay, so I'll uh, go ahead and uh, hand over this uh, kit. It's on the right, and also uh, make sure that you are careful with uh, the equipment on your right. And the hook is uh, installed here, inaudible. And I'm holding the kit, and Dennis uh, is uh, uh, translating now. Uh, 300 or 108. Copy, Oleg, and uh, EVA lapse time is 4 hours and 30 minutes. Thank you. Uh, for the update. This is Mission Control Houston, four hours, 33 minutes into uh, today's spacewalk. Oleg Artemiev and Denise Madveyev continue uh, to work on uh, the final planned task of this spacewalk. 
the installation of a uh, portable workstation adapter on a payload interface uh, near the European robotic arm on the Naoka module of the uh, International Space Station. The crew uh, has completed everything else planned for today, the installation, connection, and checkout of the European robotic arm control panel, the removal of protective covers from payload interfaces and uh, base points, as they are called, to which the arm uh, has been attached since its launch on a Proton M rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome last July. The uh, cosmonauts also installed three handrails on the arm and removed a thermal cover from the elbow of the arm. I'm uh, translating uh, over this ravine. Uh, and uh, I'm now at handrail uh, 4110, uh, next to um, BTL base point 3. Copy. And uh, uh, Denis uh, is uh, still securing his uh, tethers. Okay, Denis, stand by. I'm almost ready to uh, take it from you. Can you push it a bit? Okay, I have it now. I have it now, uh, and I'm holding it. This is the uh, kit hook. Keep moving it. Okay, that's uh, all right now. Wow, it's sunny enough here. Okay, let me hold it, uh, and then I will press the ribbon. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so um, please hold it, hold it, uh, and careful, uh, the radiator is here. Denise, how are you feeling? Do you feel tired? Well, I feel tired slightly, but overall I feel well. Never mind, uh, he's not tired. Copy, Oleg and Denise. Well, uh, basically we have just started working, right? So is it the location that we need or not? Okay. Okay, so you're going to have to rotate the handle now, uh, and uh, uh, we will press it down. So, Dennis uh, should come from the other side, and uh, you should be next to the handrail, Oleg. Well, we haven't reached it yet, but I was just asking. Uh, but I also uh, best uh, point to, is it the uh, location that uh, we need? Uh, I guess uh, our goal is near. Excellent. Uh, really great. Okay, um, 
Let me twist it a bit here. Stand by. Uh, uh, let me uh, grab it. Okay, I'm holding it. Okay, and also uh, let me switch my uh, tether hook. Everything is new and shiny. Beautiful. So many. Okay, I have crossed the ravine now. Okay, and move a bit closer. Okay, give this one to me, okay? Excellent. Uh, please stand by. Uh, do not move uh, right now, otherwise it's going to go underneath you. Just move a bit, and that's it. And uh, I will take it from you now, and uh, let me make space for you. Uh, so how exactly are we going to position ourselves? I guess I'm going to switch to the circular handrails. And also make sure that you do not touch the uh, target near point two. Re please repeat your last. So, well, you just touched the uh, target, the one with the black cover. Please do not touch it. Okay. Okay, let me uh, position myself here, and we're going to start. All right, so let me uh, grab uh, the handrail. All right, I'm uh, holding it, so you can go ahead and start translating now. Uh, okay. Okay, so uh, let me hold it. Uh, so uh, I guess we've reached our destination. So hold it, please. Uh, do you guys need a break? Uh, you've just finished uh, translating uh, to uh, this area. Well, uh, uh, what's the uh, work order here? Remove the uh, cover, position it. Is that correct? Uh, yes, that is correct. Uh, remove the cover and then uh, 
position the uh, one target next to another. And uh, before we start doing that, just a quick question. Uh, aren't you tired? Uh, no, we uh, don't want to uh, waste time. So, Oleg, the uh, tether going from your kit that's stuck, but it's uh, fine now. Uh, okay, guys, uh, if you're ready, go ahead and start removing the cover. And make sure that you secure it first. So where is it? I have it. All right. Are you holding it? Uh, yes. Uh, small uh, red hook is uh, attached, a copy, and I'm removing the cover now. There it goes. And let me reposition it. Uh, yes, we need uh, to make sure that uh, <laughs> one target is oriented towards the other. And the target itself, is it on your side? Yes, it is on your fault. So should I uh, switch my uh, tethers? And I'm going to give this one uh, to you. Uh, Oleg, uh, Denise, uh, we just had an LOS. Uh, so... You should uh, install one target next to another. Yes, well, first we removed the covers, and now we need to uh, switch our tethers to make sure that it is positioned uh, better. Okay, let me hold it, and you will pass this to me. Uh, so you can uh, secure it on the handrail, uh, and uh, I will rehook it later. Okay, so I'm holding it. There it goes, that's it. So the target is oriented towards me now, correct? Yes. Okay, so let's uh, go slowly. Uh, yes. Uh, do not rush. Uh, just go slowly and uh, position the, the kit and the target, etc. All right, Godspeed. Uh, let me take a look at the target now. So, um, should it go this way? Where is the target? So I see it now. Uh, it's on the top there. It should be there. No. So I, I think we're, uh, we need to move, move it more. Just like this. So, what's going on with the tethers? Should it go here? Like this. Stand by. Wait. More. And uh, rotate with more go uh, counterclockwise. Okay, now uh, it is uh, correct. 
And uh, this is Mission Control Houston. Outside of uh, the Russian segment of the station, in the vicinity of the uh, European robotic arm on the Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory module, sure Oleg Artemiev and Denise Matveyev continue their work to install a portable workstation adapter at a payload interface that uh, will be used to, to stage payloads for the European robotic arm to grab and uh, move to various of. Uh, points in which uh, those payloads will be affixed on the surface of Naoka in the future. Uh, yes, we can see it now. Uh, copy. Is this is the uh, final planned task of today's spacewalk, which is now four hours and 48 minutes in duration. The two cosmonauts emerging uh, from the Poisk airlock at 10 a.m. Central Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, as they open the hatch to the airlock to begin this spacewalk, the 249th, in support of space station assembly maintenance and upgrades. Uh, yes, could you go ahead and switch uh, this uh, hook? And Oleg, I think you can uh, reach it with this tether. I think it will be sufficient. Yes, it should be fine. Uh, yes, take a break. Uh, take a break, and uh, you will then proceed with uh, connecting it all. So right now, or should I go clockwise? Uh, yes, uh, clockwise to uh, retract it. All right. Denise, is the uh, PRM adapter too heavy to hold? Because Oleg is taking a break and you're holding it. This is Oleg. I'm also uh, helping to hold it from the top. And this is Denise. Uh, this thing is uh, fine. And Denise, but, but so before you start rotating the wrench, make sure that uh, that the um, uh, PRM adapter uh, is uh, sitting tight against the um, pressure plate. Like this. So let's uh, uninstall this uh, wrench now, because if we start doing it right away, then uh, this can be detached. It should go here, uh, yes. Yes, and one more thing. The uh, socket should be flush in such a way that... What was that? Can you pull it back to um, operating position? And when I uh, try lifting it, it comes out. Alec, put it back to um, operating operation, and then uh, you can uh, push again.
Okay, uh, it is uh, in place now. Should we start uh, rotating? Uh, yes. Uh, push down and uh, uh, keep rotating until uh, it clicks uh, and uh, uh, it should be retracting. Okay. It should be approximately uh, 70 turns. I guess uh, uh, we should have brought some uh, rubber tie. Yeah. So we didn't think of that. Oleg, please repeat your last. Uh, it's loose. So we should have brought a uh, rubber tie uh, to secure it. To secure it in place. Yes. Because it's loose. Well, it's uh, loose and inaudible. Uh, Oleg, I didn't copy. So I start rotating it, and uh, it uh, feels loose. Okay, I guess it's going to work. Yes. So what's going on here? I guess it's a mess. Uh, we should have brought something to secure it with. Yes, it should be positioned like this, uh, and uh, I'm, I am going to uh, hold it down with uh, both hands. Okay. Uh, yes, we uh, really need that uh, rubber tie here. Yes, indeed, it uh, uh, would work great here. Yes, I'm holding it. Let me try it. Uh, yes, I'm holding it. Stand by. Okay, uh, I guess I'm in a good position now. Uh, okay, go ahead. Uh, yes, it is in place now. Are you holding it? Uh, I guess we need some slack here. Okay, uh, let me uh, untwist it. Uh, Oleg, uh, you are rotating it in the wrong direction. Uh, it is supposed to be retracting. Please wait. Okay, go ahead.
Okay. Hold on. Started to go up. Stand by. We would like to ask you to secure the uh, French hook of the red closer to yourself. So you would like to have it a little bit tighter, right? Well, you know, when we are trying to rotate it, uh, it's coming up. Is that how it's supposed to be? Well, you made too few uh, rotations, turns, uh, to for us to be sure that it's secure. Okay. Oleg or Dennis, actually, Dennis. Maybe you can have that this rope above or over your um, glove, not on the side of your palm, but on the outer side. Stand by. Okay, then hold on. And now let's try. I I got it. Go ahead. This is Mission Control Houston. We've just passed the five hour mark in today's spacewalk by Denise Matveyev wearing the uh, suit with the blue stripes on your left and Oleg Artemiev wearing the suit with the red stripes on your right. The two cosmonauts uh, working very efficiently on the final task of today's spacewalk, the completion of the installation of a portable workstation adapter on a payload interface point on the outside of the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module. This work coming after uh, this spacewalk uh, began the first in a series of such excursions to activate and operate the European robotic arm that was launched on Naoka last July when uh, the module itself was launched uh, from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan on a proton, a proton M rocket docking uh, to the port that had previously uh, been uh, occupied by the Piers docking compartment for a number of years. But it's up Today's to work uh, involved the installation and connection of the European Robotic Arms Spacewalk Control Panel. That all checked out in great shape. The uh, two cosmonauts removed protective covers from a series of payload interfaces and base points for the arm to which it will ultimately walk off and attach itself uh, for the operation of uh, payload uh, placement and uh, spacewalker uh, movements around the uh, Russian segment of the International Space Station. The two cosmonauts installed a trio of handrails on the arm itself and removed a thermal cover from the elbow of the arm. The next spacewalk that uh, Artemiev and Matveyev will conduct is on April 28th, in which they'll go back outside the Poisk module airlock to remove a number of launch locks that held uh, the arm in place during its liftoff and transit to the International Space Station and uh, begin uh, the first uh, monitoring of the task to uh, have the arm actually move away from its uh, fixation point right now on Naoka to uh, ensure that uh, it can actually uh, operate and move, uh, albeit in very slow fashion, in its initial stage of its checkout activities. The arm will be used to ultimately uh, place a radiator uh, from one location to another for its deployment on the multipurpose laboratory module for heat uh, dissipation and uh, will ultimately uh, move an airlock that is currently uh, located on Naoka to its final uh, uh, operational destination on the multipurpose laboratory module so that uh, the Russian segment will have two different airlocks from which spacewalks can be conducted.
So where are we? All right, we have the most of it secured. Try and rotate it. Yes, we're All right, it's not even wobbling. Great. Unintelligible. No, not yet. All right, let me hold it for a second. Probably too many. Almost seventy. Hey, Sergey. Sergey has said his goodbyes, right? Yes, he did. All right. Let me uh, turn it a few more times. Okay, there we go. Now, please secure the uh, tool, the wrench, with the wire tie, right? Yes, and then take a break, please. Okay. Well, you little wrench, let me secure it, you. And uh, on telemetry, we see that the PRM adapter has been successfully installed. Hooray! So it's, this work definitely wasn't in vain. That's right. One red, two red. Stand by for a second. Are you moving to the right? Does it need to be, uh, well, it needs to be um, at the bottom. Then it's probably going to be enough. And here and now in this direction. All right, we have the handle secured, and we're taking a break.
take a break. Because it's a manual drive, and you will proceed to in the direction of MRM. I think it's too much. Okay, and they haven't floated away. No, they have not. Wow, this is so beautiful. Unintelligible. Oleg, do you have a chance to... Oleg. Could you um, verify what's the status of the MLI of the fueling uh, unit, um, just to make sure whether it's uh, stitched down or not, or sewed on? Uh, do you want me to check the area where the valve is? Yes, uh, the valve specifically. Well, when we're on our way back, we'll definitely check. Well, we can go and check it now. And do we want to leave the um, tethers? No, we'll need to take the tethers back. And the adapter needs to be um, secured to the manual drive. So now you need to unscrew it to wing nut and put it in the open position. Okay. This is Mission Control Houston, five hours, 14 minutes into today's spacewalk by Oleg Artemiev and Denise Matveyev. The two cosmonauts are currently wrapping up the final task of today's spacewalk, that being the installation of a portable workstation adapter on a payload interface to which future payloads will be mounted near the uh, European robotic arm on the outside of the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module. The two cosmonauts uh, completed everything on their uh, task list for the day. The installation and connection of the European robotic arm spacewalk control panel near a base point to which the arm is currently mounted. The uh, full checkout in all modes of uh, that uh, 
control panel were completed by Russian flight controllers of the Russian Mission Control Center in Karolyov. Everything checked out in great shape. The two cosmonauts removed protective covers from a series of payload interfaces and base points to which the arm will be affixed in the future. They installed three handrails on uh, the arm itself, removed a thermal cover from the elbow of the arm that uh, was temporarily stowed and will be jettisoned during the next spacewalk. This pair of cosmonauts will conduct on April 28th. And uh, again, uh, they're wrapping up work on the final task of the day, the installation of a workstation adapter for payloads on the outside of the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module. The next spacewalk, again, uh, that's planned for April 28th by Artemiev and Matveyev, will see them uh, remove additional thermal covers uh, from the uh, European robotic arm. They'll release a number of launch locks that have held the arm in place on Naoka since it lifted off uh, with the laboratory module on a Proton M rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome last July. And uh, they will watch as uh, commands are sent uh, to actually back the arm off of its two uh, grapple points, very much like the uh, Canada Arm 2 robotic arm on the U.S. segment of the International Space Station. Unintelligible. There are uh, two end effectors on the European arm, yes. which, when unfurled, measures 37 feet in length. The uh, European arm uh, always was designed uh, to augment the operation of the Canada Arm 2 robotic arm and the Japanese robotic arm on the Kubo module on the U.S. segment of the station since uh, both Canada Arm 2 and the Japanese Arm uh, cannot reach the Russian segment. So this now will provide three robotic arm capabilities for the International Space Station in the future. Well, this activity uh, has been ongoing throughout the course of the day. Uh, mission managers uh, representing uh, the International Space Station program, NASA, SpaceX, and Axiom met uh, in a weather briefing and concluded that the uh, first undocking opportunity for the Axiom 1 crew on the Crew Dragon Endeavor tomorrow morning would not be acceptable from a splashdown weather standpoint. And so the decision was made to waive off the morning opportunity and point uh, to an evening opportunity on Tuesday night, weather permitting. The way uh, the programming uh, will work for tomorrow is that the uh, farewell remarks by the Axiom 1 crew will be broadcast on NASA television at uh, 6 a.m. Central Time, 7 a.m. Eastern Time, right after the completion of the Crew 4 virtual news conference that will take place uh, from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The Crew 4 astronauts, uh, Commander Cho Lindgren, Pilot Bob Hines, and uh, Mission Specialists Jessica Watkins and Samantha Cristoforetti of the European Space Agency arrived at the Kennedy Space Center several hours ago for the final phase of their uh, pre-launch training that will lead to a liftoff on Saturday morning from the Kennedy Space Center at 5.26 a.m. Eastern Time. Getting back to tomorrow's activities, the farewell remarks will stay where they are on the timeline for the crew. That will be followed by uh, the crew members on board taking a nap at midday and then reconvening on Tuesday night, weather permitting, for uh, the closing of the hatch that is scheduled around 8 p.m. Eastern Time and an undocking at approximately 10 p.m. Eastern Time to uh, begin the trip home for the four Axiom 1 crew members with a splashdown scheduled at mid-afternoon on Wednesday, April 20th. This all is contingent on uh, the weather being acceptable for the next splashdown opportunity uh, and uh, the next undocking opportunity for Axiom 1. Another weather briefing is planned for Tuesday morning to assess conditions 
to support a Tuesday night undocking opportunity. Although here, we we'll probably want to have it more secure. And is it this one that we will be working with? Yes. And you can close it. Thank you. It's closed. Sergey, this is M. Crosstalk, Moscow called Sergey on Space Ground 2. And let's tighten this uh, wing nut. Tighten it. Okay. And let's just make sure you, we can't, it can't be unscrewed. Yes. And please make sure that the tab is in the open position. It's in the open position. So that's the light kit, right? Is that what we call a light kit? Yes. What did you don't forget to don't forget we we actually um would always attach a barber when we were training to it when we were training in the NBL. Oh really? All right, so we need to get that French hook, right? Let me um, get there, get get to that spot. And I'll um, try to be here. And here is the hook. I should probably attach it to myself. Um, short rest. Or maybe... Um, an OTA. Well, I'm uh, securing it to my um, short red, right. and the other one can be secured to the um, handrail, from one handrail to the other. Sounds good. I got my hand 
float in there, my left hand. Can you help me out? Well, not with the late left one yet. Okay, and I got untangled. So, I would attach it to myself then. Yes, attach it to yourself. Okay. Okay. So you'll be going first, and I will follow you. Sounds good. And the second... Red or umbilical to be secured to us. So the um, EVA time is uh, 5 hours, 25 minutes. Uh, well, what else do we um, need to, to do? So, and you will have to come back uh, again and we just wanted to let you know that probably you won't have enough time for the camera because um, you will have spent some time translating. And I think um, it will be enough. And we could have done that. And at the uh, five hour, 27 minute mark into uh, the spacewalk, the two cosmonauts have completed uh, the final task of the day, that being the installation of a portable workstation adapter on a payload interface to which payloads will be mounted in the future for movement uh, via the new European robotic arm. With that, uh, Artemiev and Matveyev will begin to clean up uh, their work site collect their tools and other equipment that they've used during today's spacewalk, and uh, shortly will make their way back down uh, the Strela boom uh, to translate uh, back toward the Poisk airlock, where they will conduct a final inventory of all their equipment before uh, moving inside of the airlock and closing the hatch. That will mark the official end of today's excursion. Okay, and we are translating. All right. Forty-one zero nine and forty-one zero eight.
are translating along. Okay, when are we going to have the installation time? 10 by 1. In about, in about 12 minutes, one, two. Okay, I understand. Thank you. So this is the radiator installation location? Yes. It is here, uh, the protective and intelligible. So we have reached this trailer boom.
One tether is already attached to the ring. Copy, Alec. Okay, so I will be on this side and you will be on the opposite side, correct? Here you go. Dennis. I'm holding it. Right. So we both are on the Estrella boom, on the ring. Copy, Alec. So we have removed the hook, and now we are, can start rolling. Copy. You know, the ring uh, is uh, uh, attached to the wire. Right, this is the telecamera just in one step away from me. It, it was. Alec, uh, we will perform this activity next time. Don't worry. We still have an hour, even an hour and a half, till the end of the day. Alec, do you copy me in Moscow? Yes, we do. Unintelligible. We could have actually performed uh, uh, this activity. Next time, Alec, you will have this opportunity to unscrew it. Thank you. 
собой. Ключи с собой. А у меня есть удивитель, только... So, I have an extender, and I think it will fit to the wrench. Yeah. I, yes, it's just a little bit uh, short. Олег, in one minute uh, you will have installation and uh, uh, you will be able then to take pictures of uh, the surroundings. All right. Yes, we have time for that. Five hours, 42 minutes into the uh, spacewalk. Artemiev and Medveyev are wrapping up uh, all of their activities around the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module, now in the vicinity of the Strela telescoping boom that they will shinny down to uh, return to the Poisk module and uh, the uh, airlock from which they emerged at 10 a.m. Central Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Time today to begin uh, this 249th spacewalk in support of space station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. Okay, we had a good uh, translation. Uh, now we can take pictures of the surroundings. Okay, Dennis, have a look. Uh, I'm uh, uh, taking pictures and video. Here are those boats. Alec, could you please take a, a close up of uh, close up picture of the boat? Dennis, how are you feeling? Are you tired? So, should I just uh, un unscrew and unravel this bolt? Alec, let us do it next time. Well, you know, who knows what will happen uh, next time? You will have to do the inspection of the hardware and the tools and to dry out your spacesuit. Well, uh, you know, there is, a, there is a lot of margin still. Now, Alec, uh, move closer to the EVA hatch. All right, in work. Actually, it is time uh, to go back 
Uh, okay, yes, we are moving. What a amazing view. Oh. Oh. Alec, Dennis, uh, move closer to the hedge. It is time. Yes. Yep. Uh, we are starting to translate towards the hedge. Well, maybe we should clean the window here. But, you know, Sergei wants letters. You know, the windows are uh, not clean. You know, you will have plenty of opportunities and plenty, plenty of work uh, during the next EVAs, guys. Okay, Dennis, uh, let's move. So what what is the matter there? You wouldn't you don't want to leave, Dennis? Okay, so try to move. Unintelligible. That is, you know, I cannot, uh, I cannot move you. You know, you your weight like uh, about 200 kilograms. So could you please push, uh, and uh, then you will be able to move. Actually, you you can even get stuck here. There is a plenty of uh, chances to do that. Mind the batteries, the arrays. I don't want to let you go. Stand by one. I am at this side once again. Okay, 
So, you know, you can just squeeze behind the boom. Okay, please secure everything. Yes, don't worry, we will do that. Now, the sun is so bright here. I think, uh, you know, these bungees got stuck here. I think we should have done it uh, differently. Okay, so where is this safety tether here? It's uh, not far from you, so the, where is your hook? Okay, I am securing it. Here ago I found it. This is done. The ring is secured. Copy, Alec. Now I need to translate. One hook is tethered. The second hook, copy. Now the kit shows, you know, the interference in comp. You know, a lot of uh, background noise. So the EV-1 uh, is controlling the kit unintelligible. That's a lot of background noise. Do you copy me? Well, oh, hardly. Alec, how do you copy me? We copy you, but now the, the noise uh, is gone. All right, copy. How do you copy me now? Well, it's uh, the background noise again. What about now? I hardly hear you. I can hardly hear you, Moscow. 
kind of a motor is working. I don't know. I have no idea. It's a, it looks like it, uh, it's near the progress vehicle. That's where it is coming from. Well, don't worry. So should I first uh, put in the manual drive, or should I ingress first myself? Moscow is another one. So could you please come again? drive to the handrail and then uh, after you ingress you can take it in. All right. Uh, no just, just. And also you should inspect your spacesuit. Okay. One hook from a kid is inside. Copy, Oleg. And the second one will be there shortly. All right. Let's get in the manual drive and then proceed with the checkout of the suits. All right, you've been exactly six hours. Um, you've been outside exactly for six hours. Okay, we copy. That's good. We should have stayed a little bit longer and done something else. Okay. 
Олег Денис, если готовы, то начинайте осмотр скафандров. All right. Uh, Denis, Oleg, if you are ready, start with the suit inspection. This is Mission Control Houston, six hours, two minutes into the uh, spacewalk by Artemiev and Matveyev. You uh, are looking at Denis Matveyev, who is wrapping up the first spacewalk of his career for Artemiev, the fourth of his career, a completely successful spacewalk in which uh, the two cosmonauts began the outfitting of uh, the European robotic arm on the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module installing and connecting a control panel, removing protective covers from payload interfaces and base points to which the arm will move about uh, the outside of Naoka. The two cosmonauts installed three handrails, removed a thermal cover from the arm's elbow, and uh, installed a portable workstation adapter on one of the payload interface areas on the outside of the multipurpose laboratory module. The two cosmonauts uh, will climb back inside the Poisk airlock momentarily. Uh, they'll spend about 10 minutes uh, inspecting each other uh, to make sure their suits are clean. And then uh, we'll wait uh, for their sublimators or cooling uh, apparatus uh, to uh, bring them back to the proper temperature inside the airlock before they close the hatch that will mark the official end of today's spacewalk. Also, just an FYI, you still have the ratchet wrench uh, attached to, to your uh, French hook and secure it with your French hook. Uh, make sure that it's actually secured. It is. I have it secured. It seems like it's just floating next to you. I may have may have just gotten caught on something. So? All right, I got it. Do you see anything else? Anything off nominal? No. One of my gloves is looking good. The other one is not so much. Um. So, if you see, do do you want us to wipe down the uh, suits? Well, if you see contamination, uh, some dirt in any um, of the areas, you need to grab the towels and uh, wipe it all down. Do you have it ready? Yes. And uh, let's check. Uh, could you check me too? Yeah, it's also yellow. All right, my left glove is covered with something yellowish, and Dennis's right one is covered with the same something. No, we copy. Grab the towels and wipe it all down. Will do. Somewhere on top. All right, one French hook needs to go here, uh, close to you. So, where should I uh, secure it to? Well, actually, maybe the hatch cover. Are uh, you holding it? Got it? I'm getting the towel out.
Uh, All right, I got the towel. All right, and here is the wire tie. And oops, it floated away. Give me the towel. Uh -huh. It's on your right side. And let's get it secured. And we have the handrail uh, next to us, right? Yes. Use the external surface handle, of course. Yeah. We understand. Not funny. Dennis, did you manage to wipe down your gloves? Yes, yes, definitely, we did. Okay, we are ready, and we have secured the wire tie. Copy. Now, let's do the all the um, the inspection of the uh, USOS tools and OTAs. Okay. Uh, Dennis, since you're going to be first, let's start with you. 
Six hours, 11 minutes into the uh, spacewalk, Artemiev and Madveyev uh, have wiped down uh, their suits and gloves. One of the towels used uh, for that uh, wipe down uh, is being uh, affixed with a wire tie to the outside of the Russian segment. It likely will be jettisoned uh, during the next spacewalk. This pair of cosmonauts will conduct on April 28th to continue the outfitting of the European robotic arm. They're now performing uh, the expected uh, inventory of all their tools uh, before they make their way back inside the Poisk airlock as they uh, begin to wrap up this spacewalk, highly successful spacewalk, that uh, initiated uh, the activation and uh, outfitting and commissioning of the European robotic arm on the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module, the arm having launched with Naoka last July from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. Yes, I still have it. Trash bag? Trash bag? A small trash bag is still attached to me. Copy. Looking good. Now, you also three small, small reds. Three small, small reds. And one small, small red with the uh, 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 for the tray adapter. I have one small rat for the ratchet wrench, and the other one is for the camera, and the other one is for uh, the um, knife, and the other one is for the adapter. That's right. Also, you should have a large small rat. A large small rat. I have it. I have one large small rat. And you also should have an adjustable tether. And the adjustable tether has been accounted for. On the crew lock bag, right? Oleg? Yes, it's attached to the crew lock bag. Copy, Oleg. Now, you have a go to ingress. And we will perform uh, the same inventory for Dennis, then. Uh, could you please update the IMS, guys? Of course. Just as a memento. Dennis, are you ready? All right. I have one. Okay. Dennis, there was a, an LOS, a short LOS. Let's uh, do it one more time. And let me, like, I will just name the items, and, and you will, uh, and get, uh, you will confirm the gap keeper. Um, do you have it? We do. A large trash bag. It's inside. Copy. An OTA. The tool caddy is in place. Tool caddy is in place. Swing arm is in place as well. We copy. And you should also have three uh, French hooks for small, small reds. Have one uh, for the cutter. Another one is for the GoPro. And I took one um, safety tether from the large trash bag. Okay, and what about the, adjust, uh, the adjustable tether? It's inside. I actually didn't even take it outside with me. 
А, у тебя был... Э, здесь, у, у тебя был... Э, 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 да, 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 там... Там... Кипер. 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 Они в одном бандле. 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 Они And present. Copy. Dennis, Oleg, please turn off your hacker cameras. Okay. Large camera is off. Oleg, could you please confirm the uh, camera has been turned off? Hold on, hold on. You just caught me mid-stride, so to say, as I was uh, translating. I'll answer in a second. Stand by. Пока ты снаружи находишься, подскажи поручень, за который Dennis. застраховали полотенца. What was the handrail that you used to secure the uh, towels to? It's uh, 60-35, that's the handrail. Поэтому поручни оба полотенца, правильно? So both towels are on this um, handrail. Is that right? Is that correct? Maybe. Yes. Correction. Yes. Oleg, please report once you have the camera off. Will do. Maybe you can get closer to me. All right. I can't really reach you that easy. Oh, wow, you, you're pretty far, are you? Yes, I'm pretty far away. Stand by. Maybe we can, you can use just one inside. This is Mission Control Houston, six hours, 19 minutes into the spacewalk as Oleg Artemiev and uh, Denise Matveyev wrap up their spacewalk for the day, about to enter the airlock following uh, an inspection of their suits and an inventory of all of the tools they used in this initial spacewalk, the first of at least about a half a dozen such spacewalks in which they will and have uh, outfitted uh, and begun to activate the European robotic arm. That robotic arm, 37 feet in length, is uh, ultimately going to be used to augment the Canadarm2 robotic arm and the Japanese robotic arm that uh, have serviced the US OS segment of the International Space Station for many years now. Those two arms uh, can't reach over to the Russian segment, hence the need for yet another robotic arm, this time uh, supplied by the European Space Agency to enable payloads and people to move about and be installed in various locations of the Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory module. And uh, Dennis's camera is off as well. Great. Now, Dennis, you can get inside. Copy.
All right, two uh, French hooks are inside, and I'm ingressing. We copy. Dennis, once you are inside, get the protective ring ready, but please do not close the hatch, uh, not just yet. I copy. Oleg, Dennis, go ahead. Well, when you situate yourself inside, before you remove the protective ring, we are going to turn off the sublimators, and while the sublimators are drying, uh, that's when you can start working with the uh, protective ring. All right, that sounds like a plan, and we'll be situating ourselves meanwhile here. Where do you want my head to go? towards the hatch, because you'll have to close the hatch. Oh, sorry. You okay? Good day. All right. No, no, no. Don't go backwards. Maybe we should... Take it with us, or should we leave it outside? Well, I am inside. All right, and grab this uh, tether with you. Will you reach? Can you reach it? No, that one. The um, orange one? Yes, the orange one on the left side, that's kind of going outside. Dennis, Oleg, since you're inside, we should follow Mr. Glazov's advice. Okay. Oleg, Dennis, this is Gennady Glazov. Could you please turn off your sublimators and put the hot, cold um, handle uh, in the open position and the uh, STR um, can be turned off already? All right, it is off. The STR system is off. We copy. Hmm. So, this is Mission Control Houston, now six hours, 25 minutes into the uh, spacewalk. Artemiev and Madveya back inside the Poisk airlock. The hatch is still open as they uh, wrap up a few uh, final tasks before getting the green light from Russian flight controllers to close the hatch that will mark the official end of today's spacewalk. Copy. So uh, the counter will start up now. Uh, so it may take about 10 minutes um, for the dry out. If, but uh, if uh, it dries out earlier, then it will let you know and tell you, basically show you uh, that uh, it's all nominal and norma or normal. And then you can, and meanwhile you can work with the uh, protect, uh, with the protective ring. Okay, and if you are Oleg, Dennis, if you are ready, you can start with uh, removing the protective ring. So, please uh, rotate uh, the handles 90 degrees. Hold on, let us remove the protective ring. 
All right, let's uh, try and remove it. I got my side free. And let us fold it. And put it behind the handrail, right behind the handrail, right here. Let me turn it like this, okay? And me too. There we go. Perfect. And could you help me pull it a little bit down or and out or down and outside? No, just down. All right, where are you going? I just got tangled up a little bit. The camera got tangled up. It's okay. Well, you have your visor still down. Isn't it too dark? Like, is it not too dark for you? No, it's not too dark, and it's not scary either. Let me push you up a little bit. Oleg, Dennis, once you stow the protective ring, please let me know. I will have some recommendations for you. Okay, we have it stowed. And what's your recommendation slash request? So, did you want us to unscrew any screws, bolts? Okay. I just uh, wanted to say that our cartridges are limited. Our cartridge is eight, uh, eight hours, 30 seconds. Eight, it's past eight hours, so you will get this message anyway, and Dennis is going to get it pretty soon as well. Oleg, Dennis, please. Review and inspect, uh, please inspect your gloves uh, one more time so that you definitely have your gloves cleaned and there is nothing left. Well, it, they are a little bit yellowish, but we have uh, plastic, um, but we have uh, bags to um, stow the gloves in. For mine, it's the right glove, and for Dennis's, it's the left one. In, in, but in general, they're looking okay. Yeah, they they just a little bit dirty, dusty, but other than that, all right. Uh, we're gonna uh, clean it up later. We can rest now. Uh, and uh, uh, we'll. We'll be sending by uh, for hatch, EV hatch uh, closure confirmation copy. Uh, EV elapsed time is 6 hours and 30 minutes. You have completed all the tasks, and all the tasks have been uh, completed perfectly. This is EV2. Um, the TO drying uh, is... Uh, in nominal position, copy. The temperature, both temperatures should not exceed uh, 15. They do not exceed 15, but they should be uh, above 15 for both water and uh, gas mixture. So wh what should we do? Uh, no, the pump uh, uh, is actually doing the drying because it circulates warm air and uh, it accelerates uh, the drying process.
I can see the bolts from here. Oleg, I can hear you. And uh, he said that will be OS. Uh, Oleg, from now on, uh, you're going to see these bolts in your dreams. Uh, well, we needed to make sure that you will be seeing them in your dreams. Yes, I can see it here. Uh, Oleg, don't you worry. Uh, the, uh, I'm already dreaming about this uh, EVA. I know that. I know that uh, uh, you are a very responsible person. Six hours, 33 minutes into the uh, spacewalk, Artemiev and Medvedev uh, drying out their spacesuits, as is common practice in the airlock. Before they uh, begin uh, the procedures to close the hatch, they've removed the outer protective ring along the uh, circumference of the hatch that uh, kept it nice and safe and secure during the course of the spacewalk that began at 10 a.m. Central Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Russian EVA is marked uh, in terms of elapsed time from hatch open to hatch closed, so we'll be standing by for that as well as official word from Moscow and the Russian flight controllers on the official hatch closure time, after which we'll uh, provide updated spacewalk statistics for you. Software has not been updated, uh, so uh, it is uh, still um, uh, using the nine hours. Okay, copy all. And uh, Oleg, uh, what do you see on your uh, counter? They are drying 6.47 on the left and 9 minutes on the right. Copy. 6.47, this is the time when you switch to internal power. Yes, and 9 minutes is the drying time. So once, once you see 10 minutes, uh, you will see the message that the drying is nominal, and then you are going to close the hatch. Uh, okay. Oleg, could you please check the status of your uh, GoPro, uh, which was secured, yes, it was secured near the hatch, and the other one was also secured, so uh, everything is uh, fine in that regard. Copy, Oleg. Uh, Denise, so how do you feel about your very first EVA? Well, he uh, did not unscrew the bolt. So, uh, uh, Oleg, did you get the message that drying was nominal? I missed it. I think it uh, went away. I, I guess I did get the message. Okay, your goal to uh, close the hatch. Copy. Oleg, Denise, uh, you can uh, loosen your tethers now. It's in work. And the hook is also on panel 201. Uh, yes, uh, correct. And we don't really have another one here anyways. 
Okay, go slowly, uh, and now you can close it. Uh, uh, okay. So please drop the hook on uh, the handrail uh, and uh, start closing the hatch. Uh, make sure that uh, there, there is no fog around uh, the hatch. Remove the hatch cover and uh, please rotate the uh, the handle to hard stop uh, along the uh, arrow pointing to closed position. Uh, well, the, the cord got uh, wrapped around the uh, handle here or something. So I'm closing it. I will keep closing it now. And uh, put it underneath the uh, guide rails. Okay, so the hatch is closed. All right. And please still the hatch tool. Okay, thanks. So we need to still the uh, hatch tool. The hole is closed. Uh, thank you, Sergei. Uh, Oleg, Denis, uh, thank you very much for your work. Uh, EV uh, time is 8 hours and 37 minutes. You, you've got to be kidding me. Do you mean 6 hours? Yes, 6 hours, 37 minutes. Uh, okay, so the uh, hatch tool is filled. And again, thank you very much, guys. You did an excellent job. Thank you. And we will continue next week. Of course, uh, and during this week, uh, we will be working together, and then there is another EVA coming up next week. And uh, I guess we'll be waiting, looking forward to get the new timeline. Uh, sure, I will uh, send the new timeline this uh, week for you guys. The timeline, the radiograms for all the upcoming uh, prep activities. Uh, thank you. Sergey, thank you very much. And uh, uh, also, uh, congratulations on your first uh, EVA, uh, Sergey. And uh, uh, so it, you really did an excellent job uh, supporting the EVA. Uh, it was great. Uh, it, it was uh, really uh, uh, unprecedented. Thank you, guys. Uh, you also performed at the uh, highest level. And, uh, Denise, congratulations on your first uh, spacewalk. Uh, everything was just great. And uh, uh, it's time for me to sign off or uh, hand over to the other specialists here. And, uh, um, I'm wishing you success uh, in your mission and uh, in all that you do. Thank you, Sergey. Uh, good luck to you. All the best to you guys. Uh, uh, goodbye. Good luck. Okay, so uh, who's going to talk to us now? Is it going to be Dima? Uh, well, I guess I need to uh, position myself closer to the deck area. There is space here. There is one hook that got underneath a tether. Hello. There it is. Hello, Denise. How do you read me? This is Dmitry. Uh, I uh, will be guiding the repress. Yes, uh, Dmitry. Hello. Uh, we uh, it, it, we're glad to hear your voice, and same here, guys. And Oleg, Denise, please uh, position yourself comfortably for uh, repress, and uh, please uh, um, 
Make sure that you have all the cue cards for repress. It should be page 4, uh, 42. All right, so uh, uh, cue card 10. Step 4, and uh, we will start on my go. Copy. Sergey, uh, for Dmitry, uh, for repress, Sergey from MLM, how do you read me? Loud and clear? Dmitry, how do you read me? This is uh, Sergey. Uh, Sergey, uh, we. Uh, I can hear you, but you're coming in with interference, and I guess Dmitry uh, cannot hear you now. Dmitry, this is Sergey for repress. How do you read me? Loud and clear, and how me? Loud and clear as well. And if I understand it correctly, you are ready to proceed. You have everything that you need. You have the electronic version of the uh, EVA 52 procedure in uh, PDF, and it is already opened. Yes, that is correct. Copy. And please confirm that all PECHO hatches are now closed. PECHO hatches are closed. Copy. And also I wanted to check if hacker cameras are off or uh, they're still running. They're off. They're already off. Okay, hacker cameras are off or FF. Copy. In that case, uh, let's start with uh, step four. Uh, MRM to repress to 260 millimeters from PHO. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, we've now confirmed the hatch closure time that completes uh, today's spacewalk. Hatch closure confirmed by the Russian specialists at the Russian Control Center occurred at 4.37 p.m. Central Time, 5.37 p.m. Eastern Time to bring uh, this spacewalk to a close at six hours and 37 minutes, six hours, 37 minutes for today's spacewalk. We will uh, have complete stats for you in just a moment uh, as uh, Artemiev and Matveyev uh, begin the process of repressurizing the Poisk airlock uh, that will precede uh, them opening up the hatch back uh, to the International Space Station and uh, climbing out of their Orlan spacesuits. Okay, got that. KVD PHO, stand by. Press uh, on KVD PHO SU open. Okay, uh, it's in work. Uh, please note the time. LED is illuminated. And uh, uh, please report on um, uh, MRM2 and uh, your suit pressure on the DSK 15. And uh, suit pressure is uh, uh, 0.34. Uh, please repress to 260 millimeters. 40 uh, is the current uh, pressure in the module and 0.3 in the suit. Copy. Uh, thank you. Module pressure is 80, uh, and the suit pressure is 0 0.26, 0 0.27 for EV2. Copy. The module pressure is 130, suit pressure is 0.2, and 0.2 for EV2 as well. Copy. That's good.
Так. В отсеке 160. Manual pressure is 160. Suit pressure is 0.16 for EV1. 0.16 for EV2. Copy. Uh, so, uh, what uh, pressure uh, should we reach? Okay, it's 260. Module pressure is 180, suit pressure is uh, 0 0.13 for EV1, 0 0.14 for EV2. Copy. Module pressure is 210, uh, suit pressure for EV1 is 0.1 and 0.1 for EV2. Copy. Module pressure is 230. This is Mission Control Houston uh, with Oleg Artemiev and uh, Denise Matveyev safely back inside the Poisk airlock. Here are uh, the statistics uh, associated with today's spacewalk. This was the 249th spacewalk in support of ISS assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. The fourth spacewalk out of the ISS this year and the first for Expedition 67. This was the fourth spacewalk of Oleg Artemiev's career. He now has accumulated 26 hours and 57 minutes of spacewalking time. And uh, of course, uh, Denise Matveyev, a first time flyer. This was the first spacewalk of his career, six hours and 37 minutes. The spacewalk, by the way, began at 10 a.m. Central Time and ended with hatch closure at 4.37 p.m. Central Time. Of the 249 spacewalks conducted in support of the space station, that has now accrued a total of 1,576 hours and two minutes, which is equivalent to 65 days, 15 hours, and two minutes of spacewalking time. This was the first of uh, what is expected to be uh, numerous spacewalks during Expedition 67. And again, the first uh, today conducted out of the Poisk airlock on the Russian segment of the station for six hours and 37 minutes. 260, and uh, uh, now you guys need to wait for five minutes for the stabilization. And what was the um, um, pressure, uh, Sergei? Let me check that. Seven. This is the pressure on and the pressure gauge uh, copy. Uh, that's good. So five minutes for stabilization. And uh, Oleg, uh, you will keep uh, using uh, cue card 11, step 5, uh, switching uh, to onboard uh, power supply. Copy. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, the repressurization of the Poisk airlock uh, has begun as uh, per uh, nominal procedures uh, that uh, repressurization paused momentarily and will resume in just a moment. Today's spacewalk uh, by Artemiev and Matveyev began at 10 a.m. Central Time, ended at 4.37 p.m. Central Time for an elapsed time of six hours and 37 minutes. The uh, two spacewalkers will be added again 10 days from now on April 28th in which they'll venture back outside of the Poisk module to continue the outfitting and checkout of the European robotic arm, 
which they worked on today, installing a control panel, uh, as well as uh, handrails and uh, taking thermal covers off critical points along the 37-foot-long robotic arm, which remains folded at the Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory module. The spacewalk coming up uh, on April 28th, again scheduled to begin uh, with our coverage at 9 a.m. Central Time, 10 a.m. Eastern, uh, with the spacewalk itself to begin a short time later, is designed to release launch locks and uh, to actually uh, observe the first motion of that European robotic arm from its stowed position along the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module. We'll carry all of that for you on NASA television on Thursday, April 28th. And before we sign off, two programming notes for tomorrow on NASA television. The Crew-4 astronauts uh, who arrived at the Kennedy Space Center earlier today for final pre-launch training and preparations will conduct uh, what is called a virtual news conference from their crew quarters down at KSC. That uh, will be aired on NASA television at 5.30 a.m. Central Time, 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time tomorrow morning. Immediately uh, after that uh, is over with, at the top of the hour at 6 Eastern, uh, 6 Central Time, I should say, 7 a.m. Eastern Time, we will uh, bring you the farewell remarks of the Axiom 1 crew members uh, from the International Space Station in a day in which uh, they are targeting now and undocking from uh, the International Space Station and their Crew Dragon Endeavor for Tuesday night at 9.05 p.m. Central Time, 10.05 p.m. Eastern Time, with a possible splashdown, if weather permits, on Wednesday, April 20th. So stay tuned, lots of activity ongoing at the International Space Station. We don't want you to miss a moment. In any event, uh, today's spacewalk successfully completed all of the objectives having been accomplished by Oleg Artemyev and Denise Matveyev. Thanks for joining us throughout the day today. This is Mission Control Houston.